Okay, guys. Um, I know every year I do like a big kind of overblown speech at the start of these things. And I thought maybe this year we just kind of keep it short and sweet and not go overboard with it and then just get straight into the games. God created the human soul with one purpose. He wanted to create existence. He wanted to instill in this empty universe beings which could experience things. But what greater experience in life is there than a video game? Do you, do you know any? Cheese. No, I mean no. <laughs> that was the last time I ever included Neve in a Game of the Year preamble. No. 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 Only we, we, ser we searched through this vacuum, this empty universe, mm -hmm. with the raw purpose of exploring. A good breed. Neve, shut the <laughs> fuck up, I swear to God. I just think we gotta give Swiss cheese another chance. <sighs> That's us fight a boss Game of the Year 2022. Love a fatta. <laughs> I like a fat ass. Welcome to the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast, Game of the Year. The cheese board's been fucked out the window. The world's strongest Game of the Year award show. To my left, she is simply herself. It is Neve. Hello. To my right. A simple man, it's Brian. I'm gonna adjust my chair. And with you always, your nameless king. It's Josh. Nice to have you, Josh. Thank hey, you. Josh. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. First things first, we gotta do a rundown of the 53 games we played this year. Um, will I start? Yes. Okay. So we got. In alphabetical order, 20 minutes till dawn. Bayonetta 3. No, we don't. That's your games. Oh. If you go all the way down. All the way to the bottom. Okay. 20 minutes till dawn, A Plague Tale Requiem. Astronaut, Bayonetta 3, Beacon Pines, Blossom Tales 2, The Minotaur Prince, Citizen Sleeper, Kogen, Kogen? Kogen, Sword of Rewind. Cult of the Lamb, Demon Turf, Neon Splash, DNF Duel, Dying Light, 2, Elden Ring, take it away, Neve. Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, Frogun, Frogun, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, Goodbye World, Grapple Dog, Gungrave, Haiku the Robot, High on Life, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, Neon White, Ocean's Heart, Oli 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 World, <laughs> Outriders, uh, World Slayer, Pentiment, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Paparazzi, Roller Drum. Scorn, Shin Chan, Me and the Professor on Summer Vacation, The Endless Seven Day Journey, Sifu, Signalis, Sonic Frontiers, Splatoon Tree, Stray, Super Kiwi 64, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, the Callisto Protocol, The Closing Shift, The Complex, Found Footage, Woo! The King of Fighters 15, The Quarry, that's it for the does, Tunic, Valkyrie Elysium, Vampire Survivors, Voice of Cards, The Forsaken Maiden, Weird West, WWE 2K 2022, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That's 53 games. 53 games. Okay, if you've never been here before, the way this works is we start by going around, taking turns, eliminating the weakest game until we're left with just one. This is the old school giant bomb way of doing things. Um, it's just our favorite way because we like to fight and we like to get things going. Last year, I believe it was Neve. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was Brian, and then the year before that it was Neve. I'm not sure of the order, which means it is my turn this year to pick the sacrificial lamb, the number 53 worst, I guess worst game. You yeah. Know? No, Joe, Joe. Okay. Just before, can can I give some quick stats? Okay. Go okay. for it. Okay. All right. John has played 28 games this year. Now he's played more than that, but he's played 28 games from 2022. 
Yeah. Uh, Neov, you've played 22 for 2022. That's... Nice and even. One game for every month? Year. <laughs> year? <laughs> month? Sure. Uh, one game for every year of the millennia. Yeah. And then I did 23. So Neov and I, you know, we got, we got 22, 23. John's kind of like showing He's off a bit. a fucking bit. loser, mm. you can say it. <laughs> John's, John's the gamer. Well, I'm, kinda, the, I'm the hardcore gamer in this yeah, podcast. Uh, <laughs> you know, for, for, it's, it's a problem. Okay. <laughs> 53 games. Last year, we had 76 games, I think. Holy shit. Yep. And it was a four-hour fat one. The uh, year before, I think it was 50, approximately 50 games as well. it was 48 Oh, it was 40. Yeah, 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 it was below 50. And that was three hours. I'm anticipating, could be way off again. I've got about three, three and a half hours going to be the length I, of this. I, I think it's going to be closer to three and a half because... There's not that many easy cuts this year. Yeah. yeah. Like there's yeah. I, I didn't play a lot of terrible games. Yeah. In fact, the first game I'm going to cut I don't think is a terrible game. Okay. Are you uh, unless you have any more stats, Brian? No, that's it. That was a good segue. <sighs> the Let's Fight a Boss 2022 53rd game of the year. The bad game. High on life. Really? Okay. This requires some preamble. I spent a couple of hours with High on Life recently, and I am a big fan of Rick and Morty. I like Rick and Morty. I have a ton of fun watching Rick and Morty. I like to watch it with Michelle, and it's really stupid, and we both just have a lot of fun watching it. High on Life is the game from Squanch Games. I don't know if it was written by Justin Royal. I don't think it actually was. I think he just contributed to it and has a lot of voice acting in it. And it really has that style of Rick and Morty humor, and it really lays it in with like the long drawn out jokes that start turning back in on themselves and pointing out why they're silly. Mm. This game showed extremely, extremely poorly in mainstream media. There was footage of like a boss fight that went around and it just seemed kind of obnoxious. I have played through that boss fight. It's not that bad. It's actually, it's pretty all right. In fact, I think like a lot of things about this game are actually fine. Like it's not a bad game. Um, I, the writing is okay. It didn't ever really make me laugh, but there was a few bad jokes. Like there's, there was, there, there, when you're fighting a boss, you know, you're, the whole gimmick of the game is that your guns talk to you. Yeah. And so you get a pistol and it's the voice of Morty and it's a very like, oh geez, we just shot that guy. Oh, we just killed a kid. You know, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's pretty funny. And there's a few jokes where it's like, Oh, our first boss battle together, and it's just it's just pointing out the fact that it's a video game, and it's not it's not very entertaining. It's like whatever, but like there's some okay stuff with it. Le- the the second weapon you pick up is like a knife, and he's like really violent, and he just wants to stab everything, and he's funny, you know, like the vo- and the the voice acting is really really good. Like the voice acting list, it, it's like there's a lot of really old like American comedy actors, people who would have done stuff like from Mr. Show and like. Um, John something has a van, that kind of stuff. Oh, H. John Benjamin, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, Coach McGurk in uh, Home Movies. Yeah, and so even if, like, the some of the writing isn't, like, the strongest, some of the writing feels like someone trying to write a Rick and Morty episode, it's still relatively good. Production-wise, like, the game is so much better looking than I thought it would be. The human characters look a little uncanny, but I love how the aliens look. They're all like squishy and weird and made of slime and really shiny and ugly and fun, you know? And like the world is really colorful and it's really nicely designed. There's, there's a lot I, I liked about the game, you know? By the end of like the couple hours I played with it, I was ready to put it down and be like, cool, I have played this game and it's... Not it's, your cup of tea. It's, it's not really my cup of tea, but like if someone was really into this game, cool, you know? Like mm. I, I think that's fine. It's a very mechanically competent shooter it's not bad it's not super exciting or whatever but everything i've said so far isn't really the reasons i feel like i want to cut it and this is going to be fucking weird and this is going to piss people off i'm aware and i've kind of gone back and forth about this a couple of times but this is also a game that uses ai generated imagery oh yep it's not all the game the way they the way they described it is that they basically used it to like create some like set dressing they made Mm. fake cinema posters with AI generated art and all this kind of stuff 
it's funny because like I was looking at these posters at the start of the game and it's like it's really cool that they took the time to like just decorate this entire bedroom with all these mm. really silly posters they're all really well done you know yeah I am nearly certain that those are the po- those are some of the things that are AI generated and it just fucking bummed me out mm. and look like here's why I, here's here's where I am with AI generated art I think this is a conversation that's going to change very rapidly in the coming years. You know, I think one way or the other, we're in the middle of this right now and we're going to end up one extreme or the other. Personally, I do not, I don't like the idea of AI generated art right now. And I don't like it for reasons that I've talked about on this podcast. This is not a condemnation of anyone who likes this game. You're not wrong for liking the game. And like, even like, you know, if you like AI generated art, I'd encourage you to read as much about it as possible and particularly listen to artists about it. Like don't listen to people who benefit from this. Listen to the people who actually create art because like art's never been an easy thing to make a living off for a lot of people. And this this only complicates that. It's like, is, is there good use cases for AI generated art? Yeah, of course there is. This is an incredibly powerful technology. The idea that there's no advantage to it is, it's kind of delusional, but at the same time, Pay, pay fucking artists. Yeah. And I guess what I'm getting at is like, when I found out that about the game, I felt bad for supporting it. When I think of the game that left the worst taste in my mouth this year, it is this game for this specific reason. I think without this, the game goes another 10, maybe 15 places. I just can't get past it though. That is why I'm cutting it first. Bye. Yeah, good cut. Yeah. Oh, um, so Brian? Me? You. Okay, all right. We're going anti-clockwise. Okay, all right, all right. I guess I will pick my least favorite game of the year. (laughs) Don't. Don't fucking do it. It's a game called Pig Ship and the Giant Wolf. I don't like this game. What? What? Where's that? Uh, It was a game I played on the Switch. Is Is it on this list? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? I don't remember calling that out. Mother... We have 54 games. 54 games. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations to High on Life, 54th best game of the year. Yeah, no longer 53 because 53 is going to Pig Ship and the Giant Wolf. I do not like this game. I thought this was going to be a fun cute em up, but it wasn't. I love cute em ups. It's like a shoot em up, but it's cute. You're playing as one of the three little pigs and you're in a little airplane that you've made and you're fighting the wolf and his army through a, a, sexu- a selection of... Sexual? Did you hear it, Neve? Did you hear yeah, it? Yeah, I did. Yep. Through a sexual of levels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll own it. All right. This game has pixel art, but it's motion vector art of pixel graphics. It lacks that consistent art direction. Mm. You know when you see like something on Newgrounds or Flash animation yeah. and it's like a Mario world pixel art animation, but then you see it rotate. Vector art should look like vector art. Pixel art should be locked to a fucking grid. That's the fucking charm of it. I played it for an hour and I would never play this game again. I cannot recommend this game to anyone. Yep. I feel Fair enough. I feel Fair enough. bad. That's, and that's all there is to say. Like that's just I can't think of any merits. I was really disappointed by this game. Neve. Okay. My cut is going to be Gungrave. Yep. That's a <laughs> bad game. I know. That is a bad bad game. I really liked PS2 Gungrave and like it's not a perfect game. In fact, it's kind of its own type of bad, but like it had a charm to it and it moved cool. Like I liked shooting guns as grave okay because i yeah the i have never played the ps2 one i think i will at some point because i fucking don't understand it. but like mm. this just felt bad he yeah moves so slowly so slowly and like I, it's just like there's a lot going on in terms of like combat and like you can parry back a bullet when they're being shot at you you have like different like you can grapple there's like there's a lot of combat mechanics gone into it for a game that just feels so slow and you don't have an aim or a reticle either so you're trying to shoot and kind of like uh, i don't know it's like clicking to them and then it's not it's just like 
it's like a really poor game in terms of its gameplay. And it kind of makes me sad because like when it first starts, like the character designs are cool. Like I like the character models. They've made them look good. Like you have like these anime ass characters and like Grave stands like crotch first. Like, you know, he's just really like... Yeah, he has a real bend to his Yeah, pose. he's a real bend. And like, I feel like this could have been something like a PS2 game where it's kind of like your your guilty pleasure or this kind of like little gem that's kind of a little crappy, but you kind of like it. But the gameplay was just so frustrating. Like I finished the first boss and I was like, I fucking hate this. Like not playing I really wanted to like it. Yeah, this yeah. Is, this is yeah. a full price PS5 game, isn't it? Yeah, it's a full price game. <laughs> It's on PS or Xbox Game yeah. Pass. That's, oh, okay. That's how I yeah. played it. But yeah, yeah, like, fair yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it's a 50, 60 euro game. Um, but yeah, really, just kind of disappointing because, like, I feel like this is the fourth Gungrave game, and they're kind of never able to get them right. That's Gungrave. Okay. Um, we are already at the part where I, I it's like tough. To find something, an easy cut. Well, what's Astro Knight? Uh, that's a game I don't really feel very fondly about. I can give you another I'll, game. I'll let, I'll let you cut it. I'll let you cut it. I can give you another game, but it'll have to be me talking about it. I've got, I've got, I played some games I don't really like. Hmm. Okay, give me a second here. Um, everything I'm looking at is like, ah, uh, but that's all right. That's pretty good. Oh, fuck yeah. No, I have one, but people are going to be so mad. Okay, Brian, give me one if you got one. Ocean's Heart. Ocean's Heart. That is my cut. That is John's cut, but I'm going to speak about it. This isn't a good Zelda-like. The artwork and presentation is great, but there's not enough guidance for the critical path, and it's very frustrating to navigate. It was a chore to play, and I lost interest after a few hours. In recent years, I think there's been a push for Zelda likes, and it's interesting to see the good and the bad. And what makes a good Zelda like, and what makes a bad Zelda like, and I appreciate that this game exists so that it pushes other games around it to a higher standard, but this is unfortunately at the lower end of it. I feel terrible for not liking this game because I really wanted to, but it didn't grab me in any way there you go there you go so brian your actual cut number what is it 50 oh yeah sorry so that's uh 54 to 51 yeah mm-hmm. john there was another game i didn't really think much of but i know you like it and we're already like <laughs> this, is only... what, this is what i thought you were going to cut straight away no i like there's stuff i like about it it's just not like this is a me problem and people like this game and it's cool that they like it i just didn't like it and if people are going to disagree with me i understand where they're coming from it's completely down to personal taste but i want to put forward cutting demon turf neon splash (laughs) demon turf is so interesting it's so cool demon turf is a different game demon turf neon splash is the sequel to demon turf yeah i have not played demon turf i only played demon turf neon splash because i picked the wrong game by accident (laughs) on the switch eShop, and i think you did too yeah well uh, yeah yeah but like uh, i love neon splash it's so like like and I, like i haven't beat it I, I played like like you know five or six hours of it but i had a great time with it and it was so weird and fun and i feel like like to me before i played sonic frontiers i was like this is what a fucking 3d sonic game should actually feel like you know like this is a this is a cool interesting game and i just think there's other less interesting games on this list well is there anyone you want, you want to cut before it oh fuck i can give you something else I think Cult of the Lamb should go. <laughs> oh, that's so nice that it's number 50. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. People love this fucking know, thing, don't I they? I know, like this is going to be people's game of the year and they're going to be so mad at me and I'm sorry, but like... I, 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 I don't like, be sorry. I didn't, I didn't play like... It wasn't like I just bounced off Cult of the Lamb. Like I put a good like seven or eight hours into it and I just came away feeling nothing, you know? I think the art style is really well done. I think it's that's that's really cool. I think it's the one really solid mechanical thing about this game or one solid thing about this game. Like 
the combat's not great. The resource management isn't great. It's like the story isn't that interesting. It's just, it's a game that does everything well and nothing spectacular. And to me, like the reason I try, the reason I'd say it should go before something like Demon Turf is I just think Demon Turf so interesting. Like the movement mechanics in that game are fucking crazy. We'll keep it there for a bit. But yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm more explaining why I want cult of the lamb to go as opposed to the, like defending <laughs> demon turf but like i just look games are art right like it's an emotion it, games are the emotional reaction you have to them i got nothing from this i think maybe if either of you guys had played this game maybe you'd be i think you'd be like ah john mm. <laughs> I, but I you can, didn't you know yeah i can remember a couple months back when it appeared on the docket before we were recording and i was like oh here we go another fucking john game that he's gonna be fucking yeah. championing and john's like no, nah, not feeling it. I was like, Phew. <laughs> I just because can I just say I really I saw... resent the implication of John game because you both have John games. It's just when I have them, it's a John game. Oh yeah, um, but they're called John games for yeah. a reason, John. Yeah, um, it's just everyone was so hot in this game in the first half of mm. the year. It seemed like just before the summer broke, it was just like everyone was championing this game as their little darling, and it's like december now and who cares Mm -hmm. like i just think there's so many more interesting experiences you can have with this kind of game that aren't this game you know Mm. none of us want to play it especially not john oh man i I think i'm i think people are gonna be really mad at me (laughs) yeah adjust it you not us because we're fine yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah that's it brian what do you got what's number 49 is it not yeah it's my girl but wait no it's not wait Shit. oh yeah no it because we don't yeah. we don't it is yours Neve. yeah yeah we keep doing this hmm <sighs> yeah honestly it is probably valkyrie elysium well it's just like i want to like this so much but it's just like a barren asset flip game it's a real like square enix empty world game you know and like you want to buy it when some something like this like the valkyries and like it's like this big preamble at the start where it's like you know she's like the champion and all of this kind of interesting lore and then you're dropped into a barren boring world with nothing to look at nothing to hold your attention the combat's fun but like again not enough there to keep you going because i remember like what this reminds me big time of is dungeon encounters last year yeah but like i think dungeon encounters did all right yeah like because dungeon encounters was weird it was weird and yeah. it, it had stuff yeah is there stuff to this game? i don't think so well. i don't really think so like narratively i'm finding it very hard to stay engaged with it and the the, the best thing about it is its combat it's like nice and flashy and flowy mm. and like going running around while listening to a podcast it's fine it's a serviceable game but then you're just like thinking about the opportunity with this this was them relaunching valkyrie like a series as a, a new ip for the modern time and it just kind of feels like it it got half the resources it needed half the time it needed and i think square really struggling writing like if not like compelling narratives like but at least i don't know like the the story is just very dry you know it's like you want something when you're having an ensemble cast when you have all these characters you're kind of like give me someone to care about and to me, it just has not got there with me. Just a bit dry. Mm, okay. Um, I'm just wondering something. Why the fuck is Outriders World Slayer on this list? I don't know. I didn't put it there. Brian put it there. It's not, not, not a game from this year? Uh, it's DLC, Brian. What the fuck? What the fuck? Are you serious? I don't, I don't know. Neve, you there. little shit star. I, like, I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, I just reeks read. of Neve. <laughs> this fucking reeks of Neve. You little fucking if trouble it making ended piece up of there, shit. It's like, and like at forty euro, it's basically a new game. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! Oh my fucking god! I swear to God, me, I don't. Mm. Do, we, do we just cut it? <laughs> no, no. I, I think you could go far. <laughs> no, we're fucking cutting this right now. I will filibuster this till fucking after Christmas. I don't get. Get this. I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear what's good about this game. We're fucking cutting this piece of shit game. <laughs> oh my god.
God, I can't. I, what is wrong with you? I mean, what is actually <laughs> wrong with you? I didn't do it. Brian put like, it there. Like, I just look, didn't, okay, like, Neve, call it out. Look at me. Look, yeah, look yeah, at yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. You fucking did this. <laughs> all right? Do you think I want to be this? Look, look like, like they're bringing a lot of new locations. Neve, shut the, the fuck ice, up. I the swear crystals, God, like, oh the new, <laughs> like, weapon What is wrong with you? I don't know. What is actually wrong with you? The combat is so like a satisfying Move and meaty me, and me. punchy. Stop fucking I talking. really like I the new boss like in it. Fuck the like it. evil cut character it. in it. Cut it, Brian, cut it. It's caught. We are only seven games in. <laughs> it's caught. At number 48. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quiet for the next four minutes because I have to cool down because I am so fucking angry right now. <laughs> okay. Well, this will cheer you up. How about at number 47, we caught Demon Turf Neon Splash? Whatever. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I'm going to cut a game called Astronite, and this is also my first time speaking about Astronite because it literally just came out on Switch. This came out at the beginning of December. Um, it is a search action game with uh, black and white pixel art that is lovely, fantastic sound design, really good vibration feedback when you are on only one little pip of health left. You have the bidum, bidum, bidum heartbeat vibration. It's a really nicely presented game and it's fun to play for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> then the game starts. And you know when you notice a mistake in the gameplay loop and you're like, why didn't anyone point it out during development? Because they could have fixed it. What this is, is... It's sort of like it's using the souls mechanic of like if you die, you can come back and you can collect your currency. But if you die again, it's gone forever. It's got that mechanic, right? And it's a 2D throwback, you know, looking retro game. And I'm playing it away. This is absolutely the kind of shit I love playing it away. And what it does is it starts you off in a kind of like beginner hub area. And there's a shopkeeper and he's selling all the upgrades that you had at the beginning of the game that you lose to a demon alien because you're like this little astronaut who is, I guess, an astronaut and a knight. I'm talking all around the place for this game. But like, this is how fucking stupid this is. You have a shopkeeper and he has his credit system and all your different upgrades cost between 200 and 500 credits. So you're going to have to do a lot of grinding. Whenever I play a search action, explore action game, you unlock abilities and then you return to previous areas to push further through them. In this game, you could just fucking grind out the beginner area, fully equip your character and then play the game. That's bad. That's not how you reward a player. And so you have this weird frustrating gameplay loop where you have all of these abilities dangling in front of you like a carrot on a stick. You don't have enough currency, but you could realistically grind it out, but you'd be playing the game wrong. But why would you have that as something you're allowed to do in the game if mm. you shouldn't do it? And it's a nice looking game, but once you kind of realize that it's wrong, it, the whole thing falls apart. And I don't think it's good. That's like, it feels like it would be an easy fix as well. Because like after you finish an area, then the shopkeeper adds something new. There you go. Yeah, but they're all there ready to yeah. go. No, Neo, you solve the problem. Yeah, stagger it. <laughs> stagger the items in the shop. No, no, Neo, they're right there from the very beginning, just pissing you off. <laughs> and obviously the cheapest thing is the map. So that makes sense. You would use the map. But like, I was very disappointed by this game. Mm hmm. Neve, John's very cross with you. I know. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. Controversial, I guess. What about 20 minutes till dawn? I heard it sucks. <laughs> Do you even fucking like World Slayer, Neve? I bet you don't give a shit about it. I bet you I have finished it. I loved it. fucking criticisms of the game <laughs> yeah. that you're not even fucking bringing out. Because you just had this fucking, oh, master plan of, oh, oh, we're going to make a big deal. I, Me, look, shut the fuck up. The, like, I didn't put it there. I just didn't call delicious it Delicious Last Course <laughs> is fucking better than like 95% of the games on this list. And you get your fucking little World Slayer joke in. <laughs> oh, my God.
God, Neve, I swear, like, Neve, knowing you is so hard. Like, you have no <laughs> fucking idea. And a beat out John's Rick and Morty shooting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 20 minutes till dawn. It's gonna Fuck be off. Odd. Okay. <laughs> um, a paparazzi is the game I'm going to call. So this was, like, just, I don't know. This was... It is what it is. You are a paparazzi who uh, takes photos of dogs. The dog models are very, very cute. They are very funny. I like them. You can get bones and like throw them around for the dogs to pose. And you have like little kind of missions that you kind of like, you know, get a dog in the water, get a, like two dogs together, get a dog wagging its tail. So you kind of have like things to accomplish within it. But like, it's also just like, it is that. Like you're just walking around taking photos of these cute dogs and there isn't much else going on with it and it's a bit rough around the edges. So I had a nice evening with it, but I'm not really... Like once I saw it on the list, I was just like, oh yeah, you know, I, I didn't really think about it it's much your favorite beyond. game, Neil. What are you on about? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's paparazzi at number 46 then. Yeah. Yeah, a uh, real, really important game. Really important game. I'm glad someone, you know had the fun of modeling all those adorable dogs. Yeah, like hopefully the dev staff had a good time because yeah. Neov didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know. We're so mean. Look, you... <laughs> You got, you got, we got to cut stuff, right? Like, we got to get some stuff. I just, like, we work, you know, we, we, okay, Neve's still working in animation. I'm on hiatus. John's doing some YouTube shit. But, like. It's not working out. No. But, like, we've been on the receiving end of this. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, look, like, anyone who's made a fucking game, like, even if it's something, you made a fucking game. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, come on. That's incredible. The best we've made is a video game podcast. Like, that's just, uh, that's a bottom feeder. Do you know the insane? skill set you have to have to even make a terrible game infinitely higher than what we have oh does he have um okay hmm. John pick the Callisto protocol it's not a good game no I'm gonna give that to you Brian yes okay this might be controversial this is a game I appreciate and do not enjoy but for a specific reason, scorn. Uh, I, mm, mm. Here we go. I, I think there's other stuff we could cut. So can I just scorn. lay out my argument yeah, for yeah. scorn? It's actually like nothing to... I actually really like what scorn is, but there's no field of view slider in the console version. There's no way to like turn off the head bob stuff okay and maybe they've patched that in i don't know but like i would play this game for half an hour and just feel really ill and Mm. because i'm an idiot i would play it for another hour and just feel so garbage and i just like there's these are really simple accessibility things and when it it, publisher doesn't include them i can't fucking play their game Mm. and it it bums me out you know because i think there was stuff in scorn i liked and that's like on top of all the other ultra frustrating things about Scorn. Yeah. I like that it's a weird guts puzzler. Like, yeah. I, I think that's fun, but I would have liked to been able to play it. And I also like, to be honest with you, I never felt like I was solving a puzzle unless they locked me into like a sliding tile puzzle or something like that. I just felt like I was clicking on stuff waiting for shit to happen. Yeah. No, I get that. Like, definitely. There's something so slow about it. Yeah. And then when it gets into the imagery, more and more the H.I. Gar- uh, H.R. Geiger stuff and the more penis stuff, the more like pregnancy stuff and all of this kind of thing. It's kind of, it's it's a bit of a nothing burger. It's a lot of image without saying anything. Sure, sure. And like, that's it, super disappointing. It, yeah. You? And it looks cool. Like, I'm always like, that's cool. That's cool that someone modeled this. Like, but it's kind of like to what end it always feels a little bit because there's not much going on in terms of narrative or even theme that really brings me around on it mm. or makes me go like, okay, this is a game people should play because of its aesthetic. Because the reason you're playing this is mostly the aesthetic, but then it kind of does nothing with it. Uh, the combat uh, gameplay is really clunky and really not fun, but it's it, there's not a lot of it, I guess. So that's fine. I don't know. I wish it was wetter looking. 
Are you guys okay with putting Scorn at number 45? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's other stuff I would have cut first. Like, even thinking about, like, Valkyrie, Valkyrie Elysium, there's probably other stuff that I would cut uh, first. Hey, but... look, this is an art, not a science. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I just cut it. Okay, Scorn's going to be at number 45. My turn? Your turn, Your turn. Right? At number 44, can we please get rid of the Callisto Protocol? Go for it. Yeah. Maeve, do you mind? I just... No, you can cut it. I don't like this game. I don't think it's a good game. I have sold my copy of this game okay, before well. it devalues because... Mm. Okay, I'm going to have a little... Okay, maybe we'll do a prediction next year, but this is my working idea for prediction. We pick the month in 2023 that Callisto Protocol is available to play for free on a platform, whether that's Xbox Game Pass, mm. uh, one of the Sony PS Plus tiers, or like Epic Game Store. Like that game comes out for zero dollars, zero euros, whatever you want to mm. call it, because that game has that written all over it. It's come out in everything, and people who have bought it have bought it, and now it's over and done with, and we don't care anymore. It's Bean and come. It got its update where he can heal a bit faster. It's mm. too little, too late. It's the Callisto Protocol. And that's why it's at number 44. I don't like this game. Sure. I don't think there's too many people yeah. that are going to agree yeah. with that. Like, it's not that's that I don't hate it. I just don't want to look at it ever yeah. again. I'm fucking fed up with it. It's pretty dull. Yeah. And, like, you could be like, hey, Brian, look at the Callisto Protocol. Isn't it annoying? It's not annoying. It's just the Callisto Protocol. Who fucking cares? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, it's just very empty and it feels cynical nearly because it's like trying to bank so much off like the dead space yeah. uh, pedigree and like it's bringing that but like it's just <clears throat> all the all the stuff around it and none of the heart of the game or anything the story's really dull the characters are dull like I've never felt an ounce of tension in it no you know and like the difficulty comes from like the the enemies take a lot of health off you you know, and they come out from the sides while you're clicked into one. So you're trying to always like parry a an idea of an incoming shot when you know there's around three people. So it's like they're doing something interesting with the combat system where it's kind of more melee focused, but it's just not working for a horror survival game. It's not fun. It's not satisfying. The four stealth sections are for nobody. Yeah. Um, I think the casting and the motion capture and all that acting, the presentation of that is great. Mm -hmm. The marketing got me intrigued. Yeah. But I, f I feel like I was missold on what the product was. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. So that's as high as it goes. And I had to do a lot to make that game look better. I tur turned off the motion blur. I turned off the grain. Um, I uh, turned off the head bob as well because it was just making me sick. But like... I don't think it looks great for a PS5 game. Like, no. I thought, like, the lighting engine is nice, but, like, there's something about it. and Something, like, when the enemies, like, like give you those gore kills, there's one of them that really, like, drives me nuts. And it's, like, they, they stick your f their fingers into his mouth and they're pulling on his bottom chin. But then the top of his head blows off. Yeah. And it's, like, because they have that animation, because it's used in other things when he gets his head bitten off. So it's just, like, you have all this, like, animating, and you're, like, okay, they're going to rip off his lower jaw. And it's just, like, no, we have the bit where his head blows off. So the top of his skull explodes from the fingers in his mouth, you know? And then they do one where they're, he's getting a head stomp, and then his arm gets pulled off instead of the, committing to the head stomp. So you're giving me all these horrible, crappy, like, gore kills. They should have watched videos of people dying. They did. They made them do it. <laughs> they actually... Yeah, they made them do it, okay, which I think is so shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like I don't know. There's just and but... like it just focus tested to shit as well. There's like I, I mentioned that uh, segment in the last podcast where they have like the writing on the wall to just like shoot the tentacles, and then it doesn't trust you to that. Mm -hmm. There's another bit where you're going down into another area, and over your mic, the guy who's talking to you goes, "Careful down there. There's a trap." to stop people from getting out. And it's just like, no shit, there's a trap. I'm playing a video game. Like, there's going to be something to stop my progression. Mm -hmm. So I heard that. And I was just like anticipating it. You turn the corner. Yeah, there's a trap there. It didn't get me because like I've been warned. The game is just like so afraid 
to let you play it and let you fail in some ways. But then in other ways, the enemies feel really cheap and take so much HP off you. So it's kind of like it's it's difficulty and it's trust in you as a player is just so skewed. And it's just like, it's a really strange game. Sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. I don't think anyone's going to care about this game in the future. Oh, no. Yeah. No, it's just, it's not. Well, you know, it could still get a sequel. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. But they, they, poured, yeah, they yeah. poured so much yeah, marketing yeah. into yeah. this game, you know. I know, and they have all those assets and stuff yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then I like, you know, I think about like 360 era, and I think of like something like Condemned, and like, like <laughs> but that, that game was a has launch a, title, yeah. But it? that game has Con- its problems. But Condemned I, was interesting. I, yeah, I yeah. like that game. Yeah. It's like interesting. There's weird shit in it. It was scary, like you know, that was like dark and like oppressive. And this, it's just like it just doesn't want to scare you but it's going to show you a lot of sh- gore i guess mm-hmm. yeah nia it's your pick next for okay. uh 43 god anytime i talk about the callisto protocol i'm reminded i'm actually i don't like the callisto protocol <laughs> nia, uh, it, nia, is the quarry good uh, i'm gonna keep the quarry a bit yeah, longer no, like yeah okay all right i'm just making sure because the last couple haven't been good but i heard the quarry was better i'm gonna no, the, 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 like the house of ash is cool okay i, I like house yeah. of ash. all right i'm gonna quote weird west Cool. And I kind of feel bad about this. I really wanted the, to like this game more, but um, I don't know. It's systems kind of like trying to build a narrative into that game wasn't really working for me. I just like could not get into what they were trying to tell me about the characters. So then what you're really focusing on is the systems and kind of coming up with fun ways to kill everyone and like put down some traps like use a barrel stick a barrel into a like whirlwind and it's like becomes like a fire whirlwind there's a lot of like fun stuff you can do with the environment and do with the mechanics to kill a lot of people but that is ultimately what you're doing you're just killing a lot of people and i never felt driven by anything more than that you know mm-hmm. i wasn't like wow i can't wait to see this new location or i can't wait to clear out this other area full of people it was like there wasn't enough with that experimentation that really kept me involved with it i guess but also like there was a lot of nice things about it i liked the well, aesthetic i think from this point on we're at we're at the part where like we're gonna start cutting stuff that legitimately has cool shit in it yeah, yeah. like i think yeah. the callisto protocol might be the last like bad game yeah <laughs> I know, but I think like Weird West, is, I'm cutting it for me because like it was one I was really excited for, and then it just kind of didn't live up to my expectations for sure. it. Sure. Um. So it's me next. I think I'm gonna have to cut the closing shift. Sure. So this was a game I part I, I I played as part of my participation in Ninja Streaming Course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And it just was like a weird horror game. And okay, here's the thing about this game and why so much of it wants to say is invalid. It's a creepy, scary game. So like, it's a horror game. It is horrifying. It is creepy and uncomfortable. So in a lot of ways, I feel like it's just getting knocked off for technicalities. But the technicalities are... The game design is insane. Like, it's all about memorizing how to make different copies, coffees with like six to seven different steps okay and so each coffee is a different thing and like playing it with stream brain was like one of the most upsetting things like it was awful it was so bad john is live on the internet and he can't play the game in front of like fucking four or five hundred people whatever it was and jesus that said i respect the shit out of the game and like i'm gonna beat it i i I really want to go back and beat it because like basically what happens is it, it looks horrible. Like it looks really uncanny and weird. Like the people all look like there's there's this element to them where they look like grainy CCTV footage. Mm-hmm. And then the environments themselves are actually kind of pristine in a weird way. But like someone starts stalking you, you know, and you get a text message of your phone and it's a photo someone's taken of you from outside the cafe. And you're alone at night. That's creepy. It's really good for shit like that. Genuinely good game. Just one or two many rough edges for me to consciously push it much further than this. Fair enough. John, there's a game you like and I don't like. Are we ready yet or will we hold off for a bit longer? Should we order food, Brian? Oh, we will order food, Brian, soon. Okay. Um, If you're talking... Yeah, I, I think... 
I think my love of this game and your dislike of it balance out to put the point that this is the right spot for it. Okay, but then, okay, fair, and I will offer another game very soon. Is this Demon deal. Turf? Yeah, this is Demon Turf Neon Splash. John really appreciates this game, likes it a lot. I wish I had John's experience of this game. Unfortunately, I did not. I love platformer games. Uh, I'll give anything a go if it's a platformer. I'm a, I know what I am. And I'm proud of it. Uh, but for me, the biggest turnoff was it's the 2D character in the 3D environment. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And some people can. So I was I watched Nitro Rad's video on this. It's a great video. Yeah, it's a, um, Nitro Rad rules. I was looking at it and being like, I'm going to play this game. And the weird look of it, the 2D character in the 3D world is either going to click or it's not. And the moment I started playing it, it clicked and I was like, this is awesome. But I could have just as easily had Brian's experience where it just doesn't compute, you know? Yeah, no, it just, it broke my brain. Yeah. I think, I think Demon Turf is like one of the best, if this was a list of like best game feel, like the momentum you can build up in Demon Turf and like when you start getting tricky and like you have like five different double jumps in this thing. You do. And like when it all starts clicking for like, just a few glorious seconds and you just sail across this massive chasm of the level. That's one of the best feelings I've had in any game this year. So like if you're into 3D platformers, if you're into like speed running or stuff like that, I think Demon Turf is like a terrific game. Oh yeah, for sure. Like like by default it has the timer on because it knows what it's going for in terms of that. I think that's kind of where I fell off with it. Like I couldn't adapt to the jump combos. Mm. I never mastered them, but the few instances where like I got close enough, just felt like euphoric. Yeah. Like real vanquish kind of stuff nearly. Yeah, yeah. But I think for me, I prefer platformers at a steadier pace rather than... You don't like momentum-based platformers. You like precision-based platformers. Yeah, like it depends on the... Like like sometimes it's fine if it's in a mini game, but if the whole game is based around going as fast as you can with the check marks, I only have so much patience for that. Mm. It's fine in a Sonic kind of game... But, like, I can only kind of stomach so many of them. Yeah. It's just not what I wanted it to be. But that's completely my problem. Cool. Is that... Who Who was that? Was that me? That was you. That was... You. It's Neve. If you're having trouble, Neve, I've got a game I can give you soon. But we will be ordering dinner. Don't you worry. Oh, I'm so hungry, Brian. Good. <laughs> um, I'm going to cut Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. <sighs> pretty cool I, for a licensed game what? <laughs> like i don't know i thought like trying to like change your characters and stuff the way you navigate this game like in its menus is so clunky and weird that i kept thinking about a kid trying to do it and just i was like why why can't i change is for a while i had like just two jar jars and like i was like ah oh, i don't want two jar jars <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to get rid of him um, and it goes through the uh, the plots of the game at such a speed, like at such a clip, that you're kind of like not taking it in. And any of these moments that are meant to hit, they're meant to hit because you've seen the movies and you know what you're meant to feel. Mm. And like, it's not really delivering it to you well in the game. And like, I used to really like the older um Lego Star Wars kind of prequel trilogy games, and I found them a lot of fun. This one, they've kind of changed the camera to behind the shoulder, and it isn't this kind of like, because it used to be uh, you're, you're moving like left to right through a screen. And I, I didn't like it. I, d I just like, there was something about it that didn't work for me and how it was presenting its world. And I also thought the world was like, unbearably ugly for something that's meant to be like you're making it out of lego i just like i don't get why it isn't all lego you know you yeah. have like flowers and then you have lego flowers it's just like should just all use, be lego flowers yeah just use the lego flowers and like it has that really natural lighting in it as well but like these like cute clunky like lego characters and there's just something about it that looked really ugly to me uh, so I was kind of bummed because everyone was like going really like everyone was very positive about this game. So I bought it because I was just like, I need something to take me down after like, you know, Elden Ring. I just need something that isn't. Yeah, something more gentle. Yeah, I need something gentle. And I found it frustrating and ugly. 
There's a lot of Lego games, like a lot. Yeah. Um, Lego even put out a bad game this year, apparently, <laughs> um, which none of us knew about until like an hour ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Lego Star Wars continues to exist, will continue to exist after this. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Yeah. It's yeah. always going to be there. It's Lego and it's Star Wars. Someone's gonna, yeah. someone's gonna be happy. Uh, kids deserve better games than this. Yeah, yeah. That is fifty-four true forty. We're gonna go into our thirties now, but yeah, we got approximately fifteen games cut. Nice. I think we're making good time. Mm-hmm. Are, are we feeling okay about that? I'm feeling yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were about an hour into this. And we've been doing this, like holy shit. We've been doing the list for an hour. Uh, yeah. Well. 55 minutes, give or take. It does not Mm. feel like that. Yeah. We are going to order some food and we will get right back to it because we'll be motivated by the idea of food coming towards my house Mm -hmm. and it going into our bellies. Let's do it. Time has not passed at all. No, I know no time has passed. No, 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 no. no, no. This is not how reality works. So I think it is time to cut WWE 2K22. I, th- I thought you liked this game. I do like this game. It's a good game. But you know what that means? No. It's a very special game of the year. Wrestle Talk. Oh my God. Okay. Yep. Um, hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to Wrestle Talk. This is a special. This is a special segment. I, John, am just hosting in the middle of Game of the Year, um, and we're gonna run through my top five favorite match- wrestling matches of 2022. Oh, no. This is going to be very long, so get comfortable. Um, John, um, we're, we're we're gonna start now in a minute once once Neve stops interrupting because you know this this can go on for as long as like um, I don't care about anything, Neve. I I will be here forever. So the thing about my top five lists is that it's very special in that there's six matches. Uh, number six, it's Action Already versus uh, Chris Jericho. And this was a really amazing match because Chris Jericho just lost the Ring of Honor title. So he, he sets himself up a tune-up match. He has a match against a jobber called Action Already. Or, or fuck, Action... I'm, I'm going to look up his name at some point and correct myself. We're just going to call him Action. And this was like a squash match. That's what it was meant to be. But action over the course of the entire match started fighting back against Jericho and he fucking beat him. And it was incredible. It was like audience participation is such a big like part of wrestling. They lost their minds at this match. They were chanting, let's go jobber. It was brilliant. Uh, number five, we have Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. Uh, Johnny Knoxville defeated Sami, Sami Zayn by trapping him in a giant mouse trap and pinning him. I have nothing else to say about this match. Number four, we have Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Uh, these two are two masters of their craft. They absolutely killed it on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. A real, like, the biggest star-making performance for Bianca Belair. I love her. I love Becky. They're both great. Uh, number three, we have War Games, Ugh. The Bloodline. What's wrong, Eve? Nothing. <laughs> the bloodline. I think we should put Outriders World Slayer back into the list because I was actually looking at it there and mm. it's some people consider it mm. its own title. Mm. Like technically, um, uh, it's like a full price game. Demon Turf yeah. Neon Splash is a DLC, but it's standalone in that you yeah. don't need the base game yeah. to launch it. I think yeah, we could put that it was in the there. distinction that you used to not allow Delicious Last Course. Yeah, yeah. well, Which Delicious is Last Course is DLC. called DLC. Okay, okay. We can, actually, we can talk about all this in a second. I'm just going to finish the list there real quick, okay? <laughs> yeah, real uh, quick. Number six, Chris Jericho versus Action... No, he already did that yeah. one. Roman Reigns... Ver- uh, the, 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 the Bloodline versus... Okay, the Bloodline is the greatest storyline in professional wrestling. It's not even close. I'd say the best two other storylines that have... The two storylines that equal this are Okada's reign as champion and the Golden Lovers. Other than those two, nothing else fucking comes close to the Bloodline story. And this was a match where it all culminated. There were so many... It was like a five-on-five, ten-man match. There were so many tiny stories running through it all. There was so much like character development in this fucking match... 
it was insane and it was like relationships evolved over the course of the match it was beautiful number two Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre um, clashed at the castle uh, this match was 30,000 people versus one and it was one of the greatest things I've seen in a long time and number one the Briscoes versus FTR1 Dem Boys versus the Top Guys absolute fucking just magical wrestling match encapsulates everything that's good about physical storytelling and wrestling and WWE 2K22 is being eliminated now. Um, mm. I like this game a lot, but what I love about this game is downloading Homer Simpson and making him fight Spider-Man <laughs> and building a fake wrestling league out of it. I don't like playing it that much, but boy, I sure do enjoy the other part of it. Are the uh, menus good? No. But then, oh, that makes that harder to yes, it engage does, with. Brian. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, mm. much harder. Yeah. Uh, Oni, can you add in the wrestling music where necessary, please? Oni knows what to do. I'm just making sure I care about his life. <laughs> He's on probation for his job, and I'm I'm thinking about him. He's a lovely <laughs> fella. We might have to cut that. That was number 39. Okay. So that's the 39th best game we've played this year. Because mm-hmm. we've all played WWE 2K. A lot of strong yeah. opinions. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. no. Um, yeah. Okay, it's me. Mm-hmm. At number 38, I am going to pick Frogon or Frogon. I don't know how to pronounce it. Frogon, Frogon is aesthetically charming. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. My cup of tea. Love the visuals. The gameplay isn't up to scratch as much with the visuals but it's also very period accurate in that sometimes you land on a ledge and you die and sometimes you land on a ledge and you're fine and i remember that from some of my playstation platformers like crash bandicoot and uh not spyro because spyro is tight croc croc was a croc was a, a fickle game and this has that kind of Frustration, but frustration that's necessary. But I don't know how necessary that is in 2022. It's a very charming game, and um, I'm real sweet on it. I think it's brilliant. But this is where it goes, because I can't see it going any further. Okay. And I like this game. Neve, what do you got? Number 38? That um, was, that was, Neve's got number 37 now. Okay. 30, number 37. I'm cutting Voice of Cards, The Forsaken Maiden. More voice of cards, which I am mixed feelings about, but I prefer the first game because it had a lot of fun, weird muscle worship humor in it. And this is kind of improved in a lot of ways. I think the main characters are more interesting and the combat's a bit harder, which was like another little criticism I had. But it's lost its humor and thus within that feels like it's lost a bit of it's like what made it a little bit interesting so or how special. much how much muscle worship this time around none okay not a bit i, th- I think maybe <laughs> they should have cut the card stuff yeah yeah, 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 more, yeah. On more, more on the muscle worship. Yeah. yeah i just same. want to see a big beef titty yeah yeah, yeah. like i know aesthetic is really nice i really like the cards and i really like how they they're used for absolutely everything in it um you get some fun pieces of animation because of that um story was fine but just generally the first one's so much better i think okay cool number 37 six six guys ghostwire tokyo is still on this list yeah and i have not played this game you two have it sure didn't seem like a game that should last much beyond this no i have a fondness for it yeah me too (laughs) like if you guys are willing to fight for it like i got nothing against it it's not even that I'm willing to fight for it too hard, though, because it isn't great. I'm just looking at other games I've played here now. Yeah. Like, I'd get rid of Stray before I got rid of Ghostwire. I, I keep, I'd keep i actually keep Stray before Ghostwire. Okay. But I, I can give you another game if you want, John. What do you got? Kogan Sword of Rewind. Sure, go for it. Okay, Kogan Sword of Rewind is going to be our 36th game. Uh, This is a game only I played, but I am chill to just kind of put it where it is. This is a really cool looking pixel art platformer that has gameplay functionality of the Mega Man. More so the Mega Man Zero games, I guess, on the SNES, but also the Mega Man games 
that were on the Game Boy Advance and DS. I can't remember what they were called. There's like there's like a quadrology or what's like a fiveology? Quin Pentology? Yeah, that's with that. Yeah. Um this is pissing me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian, if you're stopping to look that up, I'm gonna cut off your hands. It's not Battle Network. Brian, the flow, the flow, bro. I already broke it. Kogan You're not allowed to do that anymore. Okay, fine. I'm on the computer. I wish I didn't. Okay, Kogan sort of Kogan sort of rewind. It has some cool mechanics where you uh, pause and rewind time, and you can change the velocity and trajectory of your jump, which makes platforming super interesting. But it also means you need to be kind of fluent in that gameplay language mm. and so when you are clearing platforms and puzzles you're actually not sure if you're supposed to be able to do it or not so there's a lot of just sort of throwing your character across gaps and hoping that's what the designer intended oh weird okay and so yeah, like you're using the tools available to you, but you're not sure what the limits and capacity of these tools are. And so the first couple of times you'll play a level, you're you're getting a bad score. You're missing loads of the collectibles. It's one of those ones you go back and you replay and you get a better, you know, like it, it is about learning the game through mistakes, which can be good and can also be not so good i don't want to say bad because you know playing a game over and over is sometimes what a game wants you to do like look at cuphead but i just think in this game it kind of shows exactly what it is from the get-go and it doesn't really have a lasting impression still a great game if you're curious about it at all check out you know a trailer for it check out some of the screenshots if it's on sale and you think it's a decent price i would say go for it because it's a good game and I think it's available on pretty much any platform and uh, I think it's part of the bigger series I could be wrong could be right it just seems like it's very but like at the same time it's it's very much like anime girl sci-fi generic visuals like the 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 main character of this game looks like one of the girls from Blaz Blue you know that's like half human half mech yeah so I actually did play this game and it took me this long into this entry to remember that I played it yeah. It's not badly done, but no. it's not distinctive either. You know, it lacks distinction, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and I think that's why it. this is as far as it goes. Yeah. But it's a good game. It's not a great game. Was that my cut or yours? That was your cut, so yours, now it's... So your, yours. <laughs> all right. I've, I've got a couple, but, you know, I think we all do at this point. John, is Beacon Pines good? Ah, oh, foo. There is stuff I would cut over Beacon Pines. Beacon oh. Pines is good. It's not great and it comes so close to being great and that's kind of what makes it hard. Neve. Mm-hmm. Dying Light 2. Oh, yeah, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I love it. I'm feeling it. I really liked the uh, parkour in the first area you get to, but once it got the wing glider and once it opened up, it really took the momentum out of it for me. And it's just a, here's a map full of icons, uh, go into here, get some loot. You know, it just, it is, it is what it is. Here's an open know? world, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> here's an open world. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. the acclaimed genre. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, piss off. And I didn't find the story particularly interesting and the kind of uh, moving between the factions I found, like, was a weird inclusion for the gameplay element because you're never really siding with either one and it just kind of felt like more busy work to do nearly rather than something that really informed the narrative or informed anything else. Mm. Cut it. Yeah, that's at number 35. So which I think is now your turn, Neve. Okay. I'm going to cut. What am I going to cut? What's DNF Duel? That's a fighting game from Arxis. Okay. That's a good fighting game. Okay. And keep it longer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we we'll keep yeah. it. Beacon Pines. Uh... Those little characters look gross. Oh, they're really well <laughs> illustrated. Oh, I hate them. 
Oh no! <laughs> me. <laughs> I just, I just hate. I hate how it looks. No, it's gorgeous. It's a really lovely looking game. Uh, well, Do you not think the little like diorama backgrounds, everything are really good. They are cute. The little yeah. diorama backgrounds yeah. is just uh, they're all right. I'm, like, just, I, okay. I'm being an ass. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be my cup of tea, but yeah. like I wouldn't be like ah. Uh, I wouldn't dis- I, I like, think I think a lot of skill went into those illustrations. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like, it's a, it's more of an aesthetic thing. Oh yeah, no, sure. no, they're they're technically very charming drawings. It's just I'm not being charmed. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm looking at the games now that I know didn't really do a lot for any of us. And Beacon Pines to me, there was a moment where I was in Beacon Pines and I really mm. liked it. But like, okay, let me take some temperatures here. Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Not just yet. Okay. And we're still don't want to cut Ghostwire Tokyo. No. What about milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag? That's the fucking real shit. That ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Cool, John. What about Neon White? I think Neon White deserves to go for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, How about Pokemon Legends Arceus? That game's kind of cool. It sucks, but it's kind of cool. Is King of Fighters 15 cool? Hell of a game. Yeah? Yep. So, okay. Here's the weird rhetoric Brian likes to use in these where he'll pick all my games and he'll make me say no to all of them. And then he'll be like, do you ever notice how John never wants to cut a game? We can just do that to you, Brian. We can just, you want, you want, you want to cut Splatoon 3? Not just yet. Go on, do it again. You want to cut Super Kiwi 64? Not just yet. You want to cut Blossom Tales 2, The Minotaur Prince? Not just yet. Okay. I feel my point is made. What's Vampire Survivors? Oh, that's a question. Uh, it's that game that plays itself. Okay, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. I've got a question. Is Vampire Survivors and 20, mil- 20 Minutes Till Dawn not the same game? They're the same game. Mm-hmm. John. They're the same game. <laughs> John, we got to cut one of them. Come on. This is, this is mad. I mean, 20 Minutes Till Dawn is in my top five. Cool, then Vampire is, Survivors it is. Vampire Survivors is in my top five. You're fucking freaks to pair me. <laughs> okay, fuck's sake. And you, you don't want to cook Ghostwire Tokyo or Goodbye World. I'm not going to insult you and say Grapple Dog. Get rid of Stray. Yeah, why, like, why is Stray? I don't know. Like, Brian, you called it like a fucking Naughty Dog game. <laughs> I feel like this is the only podcast in the world where uh, yeah. that's like an insult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I prefer straight to Ghostwire. That's okay, a- okay, I got you. Mm. Okay, what about Shinshan? No! <laughs> See, he, he always does this. Brian, Brian never refuses to cut something. What about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You guys weren't too hot on that. I haven't played it. John has. Uh, okay, like... <laughs> it's way forward at their best, but what does that mean No, anymore? it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not? Okay. River City Girls 2 just came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That shit just dropped. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to play it. I really wanted to. There is amazing things about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know. Like, why is Stray still here? Why is Ghostwire still here? Okay, fine. We'll do Stray. Fuck that thing. <laughs> if you don't like it, why is... <laughs> At number 34, we got Stray. The reason I upgraded my PlayStation Plus account. <laughs> John just coughed water. <laughs> UK, John? I'm good. I'm good. No <laughs> escapes. He's dribbled on his hoodie. I haven't. I haven't dribbled anything. <laughs> yeah, you dribbled. I nearly did. I haven't dribbled. That's the pattern of the hoodie. It's Spike. This this game is fine. It's a fine game. And um, 34 makes sense because that's kind of approximately... We're nearly halfway through yeah. the list. And it's not 33. It's 34. And that's the age I am. I don't mind saying what age I am. <laughs> To me, like, know. how... Leaves 45. Uh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, gosh. Uh, how do you give me a cat game and then I don't have a jump button? Like, you know, you just have to wait till you get to the prescribed areas to click on and jump up. Like, yeah, the got, fact that I... Prompt. Yeah, the fact that I can't jump freely as a cat is annoying. I should be able to parkour up the fucking side of walls. I like the robot designs. I like the... It's kind of like that walled city that was yeah. outside of Hong Kong that got dismantled in the late 90s. It's definitely inspired by that. I loved all that. Is that, that. Kowloon? Is that yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's that thing where like you can't see the sky mm-hmm. because of how narrow all the walls are. All that aesthetic. It's pretty. Super, it's super pretty. It's super cool. 
I think it kind of shows exactly what it is in the first hour and they mm. need to play it for a couple more hours yeah. and it doesn't develop beyond it. The cat at the beginning is separated from the other cats and um, I felt that wasn't followed through thematically, but I guess cats are solitary animals. I just felt like it was missing something and I think it could have been better. Mm-hmm. Stray is at number 34. It's a fine game. Whose pick was that? I, Mine. Neves. Okay. okay. I will now cut Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This game is so weird to me because it is the highest, like, it has the highest ratio for me of games that have so much love and detail poured into them versus something that, like, on a mechanical level did nearly nothing for me. Like, and the further I get away from this game, the more bummed out I get about how it plays. Like, I'm at the point where I think it's like a bad beat em up. And that sucks because it's it's beautiful, it looks great. April is really fun to play and she's like, she, she's really fast and like, like it feels good to hit with her, but it's like, there's just nothing interesting in the way that you dialogue with enemies. You know, like like my big problem with this game was the dodge button because it has so many iframes that like it nullifies everything. Your answer to every decision is dodge and then like attack. And like that is the game. When I see people compare it, when I see people say like, well, which is better like this or Streets of Rage 4? Streets of Rage 4 is like a master fucking piece of like like, especially on the higher difficulties, the decisions that game forces you to make are so fascinating. I never had to do that once with Shredder's Revenge. It's cool. I like how it looks. It's just, it's not there for me. It's not the game. I really wanted to like it. I really wanted this to be in my, like, top 10 of the year. It, it just, it isn't. And it's a bummer. And there's cool things about it, but yeah. Okay. It's me? Mm-hmm. It's you. All right. I have not played this game. I was making fun of it in the last episode. I am genuine. Look, I know I'm going to be the, and I know it's going to be the joke that like, I don't like this game. I'm genuinely curious about this game. And Neov has played it more than John has. How do you feel about Signalis? Because I've heard great things. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like, like I haven't finished it. I find the inventory frustrating. And I like how it looks. It looks fucking Like, it awesome. looks cool. Like, it looks really, really nice. But I find uh, the story that it's trying to tell, oh, it's not It's not gripping me. Um, and the inventory management stuff it feels like it's tacking on hours to a game that otherwise would be much shorter. That kind of frustrates me. It feels like sometimes just slow out of the inventory management. Yeah, I feel like you're getting three extra hours of gameplay just backtracking to manage shit. Because like you walk into a room and there's like five items or like three items and you need them all. And you need to just reshuffle that shopping yeah. bag. Yeah, you have to like go back and like drop stuff off and go forward. Like it's, I don't know, it's frustrating, I guess. But um, it didn't grab me. Like I was really hoping it would grab me in the way that it grabbed other people. I just kept falling asleep every time I played it. Signal's fans... Remember how last episode I said that you could rely on me? I lied. I didn't play any more of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Doesn't want to play the game. I do want to play it. I think it seems cool, but like, I just, I can't really argue with anything that you've said because I don't have more than 30 minutes in this game. I liked everything I saw on an aesthetic level. This was so my shit. Real Sega Saturn vibes. I'm going to play more of it. Like, I think it seems cool, but I think this is, this is kind of as far as it can go. Is, yeah. is, is okay so we're okay collectively at putting signalis at number 32 yeah i just want to make it clear to everyone like you know we just haven't played enough of it really you know yeah, so my I, I, I know this is a very personal game to a lot yeah, of people so my criticisms of it are, are like i haven't got there with it and maybe if i did i would have much more to say yeah but maybe like, it shouldn't even be on the list i guess like one thing i would say as well is like with stuff like that it's like well you should have played more of it and my response to that is like, well, the game should have made me want to play more of it. There's various points where like I had an hour free a day this year or this, 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 uh, oh, and I played something else instead. Yeah, same. I played Pentiment. So it seems cool. I'll play more. And if I'm wrong, I will come back next year and be like, shit, we fucked up. Best, will, o- uh, best old game. Best old game. Yeah. Yep. It's got, it might have a second chance. It does seem cool. I see people say it's special and it looks like it has something special. 
Was that your pick, Neve? That was Neve's pick by my forced yeah. judgment. Okay, so now it's your pick, Neve. Wait. No. No, it's John's oh, oh, okay. pick. Okay, John's pick. Um, um, okay. If you guys want to keep Ghostwire on no, here. No, you can get rid of Ghostwire now. Brian? Yeah, go for it. Okay, Ghostwire. I don't know. This is a game that I hear nothing but mediocre things about. It's like, it's, it's frustrating because it kind of has a bit of a... I liked going around the, Tokyo. Like it's mm. like it's yeah, it's got a fun map. It, yeah, its world is like very beautifully rendered, and it's a nice space to be in. Um, I found the combat extremely clunky and slow for something that looks so fast and fluid. It really isn't, and just the kind of way you get your power ups and the way you level things up, like with the with the tree, the skill tree, just feels like. They had to put it in because that was that type, like that's the type of game it is, or something. Mm, yep. And none of those power ups, none of them felt important, like are good to get. No, you just focus on the stealth because yeah. it's just the quickest way to get through enemies because it, they become a chore. Yeah. Um. I tr- I played mostly with the bow and arrow. Like I didn't. Even, I didn't. I never touched it. Yeah. I just upgraded it because I had points at the yeah, end. Yeah. Exactly. And I had to do it. Yeah. And I tried to kind of like maybe get more out of the game by using the bow and arrow. And I kind of did. But that was like, that was me very consciously like, people don't use this weapon. I'm going to try and use it and get fun out of it. Um, My enjoyment of the game really like doubled when I read like Andrew Woodhouse's uh, article about kind of it being um, a comment on gentrification and just like living in uh, Tokyo and seeing it kind of change like that and there's a load of like building sites around it and you know you're kind of building on top of ghosts and myths and That's old really cool. over that, new that is really really cool yeah. yeah so when you're fighting all these like um cool uh like yokai and, yeah yokai and enemies spirits. and stuff like you're kind of blending this like new and old together in a way that's like yeah so like it'll be yeah. you fighting them in a building site and like they're in pain but is it are they in pain because like the, the, the space that would have been sacred to them doesn't belong mm. to them anymore. It belongs to an, an, a younger generation. Yeah. And, like, and I think there's like cool stuff around it. Like there's like even when you read the descriptions of some of the enemies um, and like it's about like like you, there's some office workers there and it's about like having to have the second face and like having to be polite all the time. Like there's all these like cool ideas that don't really bleed into the story. The story's just... It's fine. Like it's serviceable. Mm. It kind of gets you there. The sister. Yeah, he she's in a coma say, yeah. between the realm of the living and the dead. Um, and I wish they kind of brought in more of what was clearly part of their um, their thinking in terms of like the design and the monsters. I wish that that was more blended into the story. The game very quickly becomes like you enter an environment, you're locked off, and you just got to take care of waves of enemies. Yeah, and you got to you know. There's a bunch of games on this list that have that, and it's just that distilled into its finest form. Yeah. Sure. And this isn't that. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, makes sense. You know, out of all the clearing icons on a map game, uh, this is the one I liked doing more just because being in the city was cool. Yeah, no, no, it's good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's got some good side missions. I, I love. I was going to throw it on some point over the holidays just to see some Tokyo. Mm, yeah, it's no, worth it for that. It's 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 an accurate depiction of Tokyo. It, they looked at Google Maps and it is to scale, mm-hmm. cool. which I appreciate. But for the most part, it's to scale. Sometimes they have to abridge some of the streets and they'll kind of like skip one or two so blocks like it's over. It's scale, but it's like jigsawed together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the important parts are correct. Cool. Brian, yes. what number are we at? Uh, we are now at number 30 and I am going ooh, to, ooh. I'm going to put down one of my games, a game called Goodbye World, which is a text adventure game, but presented as a top down, I guess, RPG maker looking kind of game. But you're just watching it as if you're watching a cutscene about two characters, two girls making a game that isn't going well. The game itself is a Game Boy style game and that Game Boy style game was very addictive and for some reason i got like you know how sometimes you'll play the game within the game and that ends up being like fucking hype yeah like what's 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 the game inside final fantasy 8 triple triad Uh, yeah and like people love that shit i love that game rules (laughs) yeah and like what's the one in witcher tree gwent Gwent, yeah yeah. and then that ended up like getting it yeah. Yeah. yeah and so like 
the little fucking like I can't even remember the name of it, but it's inspired by some of my favorite G, uh, GB games. So I was just like hook, line, and sinker for it. That really captivated me, and I can kind of remember the body of work around it, like you know the actual narrative. But it was just like that little block puzzler platformer, fucking brilliant, cool. But goodbye world at number thirty. That makes sense. Mm. Goodbye, goodbye world. Niv at number twenty nine. Oof. Mm-mm-mm. Beacon Pines. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> why? Do you, like, why is it funny? Why is it always like, oh, oh Joe's good in the game? You never like that for Neve, Brian. Brian. Oh, we will. Okay. Um, Beacon Pines is like a game where because uh, there's three games I'm ready to cut now. Okay. I think with the other two, the other two nail something. Beacon Pines does a lot of stuff well, but the thing. I think it should have been just never quite clicked because there's this undertow of horror throughout Beacon Pines. Mm. There's this like, you are this little guy and there's something really sinister happening in his town and it's to do with a big company. It's to do with these weird robots. It's to do with like this weird sludge. I think on the podcast before I told a story about how like it was all fairly storybookish until you push another kid, kid into this sludge and all of a sudden they get all fucked up looking and it was like, oh, that's interesting. That's such a nice contrast with like the sweetness of the rest of it. And that moment really kept me going kind of all the way through. And I haven't a hundred percent beat it, but like I'm at the point where I know what's going on in the town. I know all the characters' secret motivations and all that kind of stuff. And it just never came close to that moment again. I just feel like I kind of played through a storybook and like a beautifully illustrated storybook and really well voice acted and like some really like tight, nice writing. Like it's all done well. But as for a part of this game that makes me want to push it past this point, there just isn't one. And it it sucks because it is a really cool little game. It's on Game Pass. People should give it a shot. Um, it has given me nothing to fight for it beyond this. Me next number. Yeah. Uh, number 28. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Okay. This wins the award for like best cozy game. Uh, of this year for john for john I, actually you know i'm gonna i'm gonna take that back uh this is i'm speaking on behalf of the podcast this is the best posy game cozy game of this year <sighs> look this game is the promise right it's like yeah. for fucking years people like a, a, an open world pokemon game would be awesome you fucking look across that river and see a level 44 snorlax and you walk up to him and he bodies your entire fucking team it's all i've ever wanted and it was amazing you know, like it's it's slow. It's a Pokemon game. The writing is a Pokemon game. It's like all that kind of stuff, but it's cool and it tried something different. And one of the reasons I think the new ones, uh, what are they called, Brian? Scarlet, 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 Scarlet and Violet. They yeah. just came out. Yeah, and, one of the reasons, and they're I, rushed. Yeah, they're rushed, but they're also like they're not what this game was. Mm. You know, and it's a shame because like this game really did do shit. And like it, it's there's a bunch of rough edges. It looks like garbage at points, but like. There's something fucking here. Like, there's something real here. Like, there's a genuine attempt to look at Pokemon in a cool way. And how fucking cool is that? Finally, you know? Like, how cool is that? So, yeah, I th- I have so much respect for this game. And I really enjoyed the admittedly pretty small amount of time that I spent with it. But I it can't really go further than here. That's fair. Okay. Actually, I was incorrect earlier on. I think now we are 50% true. Okay. And our recording time is an hour and a half, which is good. Yeah, okay, okay. But it's going to get painful. Yeah, well, it's like, I feel like now we're past the okay games and now there's pretty much only good games left. Okay, and for me, this is the first one that's hurt. And Vampire Survivors. And for me, this is the first one that's hurt. Okay. But number 27, I'm going to put down Super Kiwi 64. Oh, okay. I really like this game. Really? I just thought it was really charming. It was an hour long and it didn't waste my time. I mean, that's fucking perfect. How many times have you no, played a video right, game right. and for the first hour or maybe you're an hour in and you're like, stop being shit. Be good again. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting older. We're getting bonier. Mm-hmm. The dust. I coughed up like 
skin. I don't know what's going on with my body anymore. My knees are sore. But you know what? I played Super Kiwi 64. It made me feel like a happy little fat boy. It's a good game. It costs three euro. Um, it's from the dude who made Tori 3D last year and the year before it was MacPat 64. He knows what he wants to make and he makes them and he, he's got his credits and maybe I should be in those credits because I got to fund that shit. But then I'd be kind of like complicit to the whole thing, wouldn't I? Then you could. But if you funded this, we couldn't talk about it in Game of the Year. We, but we've backed Kickstarter games. Have we? Yeah, Hyperlight Drifter is really good. Yeah, we're a sh- we're a shit. Like Drifter. We're bad people, and uh, Kiwi sixty four uh, highlights how bad we are because this yeah. game is so cute and purified, and uh, the world is an awful place. And sometimes a little game like this comes along and makes life worth living. Just you know. <laughs> no, that's we really went some places. Yes. No, okay, you know what? We're all gonna die someday, and sometimes oh you gotta. No, no, okay, okay, I'll try again. I'll try I again. Mean, I think uh, <laughs> I'll try again. Okay, this game is good. Okay. There we go. There we that go. sounded yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. That that sounded like something you could say, you know, uh, to a child, <laughs> <laughs> to Neve. another person. <laughs> yeah. Number right. Twenty six. Twenty six. Oh God. Um. Tell me about milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. Yeah, John. What the fuck are you doing? I could tell you about it, or I could just give you a different game. Yeah, go on, do that. Sonic Frontiers. Oh. <sighs> yeah, sure. Sonic Frontiers is fucking cool. Like, we're, we're past the point now where yeah, it's any hurting. of these games are bad. Mm-hmm. Sonic Frontiers fucking rules. And, like, it's not like... Okay, part of it's like, oh, it's a good 3D Sonic game. This game's weird. Like, this this is... A, like, this game has the tone of Death Stranding, but the main character is Sonic. <laughs> and it's so somber and sad and, like, we, like just strange... And then, and like oh, this, these like gentle twinkling pianos over like this just giant empty vista of a ruined world, and fucking Sonic the Hedgehog is standing there. It's like he knows Yuji Naka has been arrested, huh. and it's it's good. But like, I like it as well because like the whole world is built like this weird roller coaster. Like there's just rails and launch pads and boosters everywhere, and it does that thing where Sonic kind of plays himself, but like just enough that you still feel in control and it makes for this incredibly like breezy experience but then on the other side of that the cyberspace worlds are like traditional sonic levels and they look really crazy and fun and they have these insane vistas and all this beautiful scenery sorry about my mic and you but you play through them and you totally like i bet i could get through that a bit faster and the controls are tight enough that you do and it feels great You know, and like, I I spent like, I spent 45 minutes on the first level just trying to like platinum it because it was so fun. You know, and this, this is a genuinely good game. But at the same time, Rouge the Bat isn't in it, so cut it. Fair. If I find out she's in it, we'll, again, we'll get back. Yeah, yeah, no, it can be argued again. Um, Was that Neve? That was Neve. So it's now it's me. Who? Hmm. A couple of years ago, we had a game of the year and we had this one game. And never again. It was a Deus Ex game that we mistakenly... Yeah, that, that slid into the top five. I was thinking of that earlier today and I actually got angry. Never again, okay? Mm-hmm. And I just want to know, how hot are you on a Plague Tale Requiem? I like Plague Tale Requiem, okay. yeah. So you're fine to hold on to that for a bit? Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay, I'll okay. Get, like, what about the quarry? You know, I like the quarry a lot, yeah. and partially because I fell in love with one of the dudes in it. You know, the real stupid guy? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's just like me. Like, he just doesn't really understand, and <laughs> I loved that. But I've also, I've played one two-hour version with Steph. Yeah. Steph was probably 50% of the reason I was having such a good time, because she's mm-hmm. a delight. But if you want to cut it now, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if they're going to continue making these games, less with more is kind of where I wanted to go. There was just a lot of elements, moments where I felt like that could be gameplay, that could be gameplay, that could be gameplay. Like they didn't do anything mm. with puzzles. They didn't do anything like at all. And that sometimes it just feels like you are going through a movie and kind of just waiting for the end point where all your characters like horribly die you know yeah Um, does does this game have the bit where you have to put a battery in a torch no okay that's good yeah they always do that i'm glad i stopped 
I, at least I don't remember. I, there was stuff I really liked. Like I really like it felt like out of a limitation, but I really liked the transformation into the werewolf. Like it just like their skin just burst off them and they were like <laughs> these really wet looking gross werewolves. The the cast was great and like the performances were all really great. So good. They've like really like leveled up their game when it comes to uh, facial animation and performances. Like some of it looked a bit ropey, especially mouths, maybe teeth, but like uh, it generally looked very good. I just kind of want these to be to give me a reason to replay it because when you get to the end and kind of your characters die and sometimes it feels really cheap it feels like the windows that you usually have are shorter and all of these things and then everyone's dead and it's kind of like well if I ever wanted to experience this again and try and get to a point where these things didn't happen there's no real game here to play you know Mm. so it's just a it takes a long time to kind of get through it and I think some of the deaths and stuff were like the ones earlier on were very like uh you kind of knew how to avoid them i guess i don't know i kind of want i I like this genre of game and i want them to do more of it i just want it to be more of a video game i want there to be puzzles i want their yeah i want like i want stealth in it or something you know to be more engaging i'm kind of meaningfully having an effect on the story because i feel like a lot of it's like do you want to go up the stairs or stay in the hall and it's like This is, like, it's a decision, but I'm Mm -hmm. not basing this decision on anything. Yeah. It's like, like, I have no context. Yeah, it's not developing. Yeah, like, like, Mm. um, I guess I'm flipping a coin and hoping that I land on the one where my character doesn't die. Yeah. You know, it's like, because I think, I think they could be doing more interesting stuff in terms of that. Me too. Like, there's a moment where um, the character, like, it's like, there's a, there's a quick time event. uh, You do it. Uh, I got it successfully, but the guy still took the gun off my character because that's what needed to happen in that story and moment. And like, that's the shit. Like, yeah. I still feel like in a way these games are made kind of like th- there's the story mm-hmm. and then the decisions are stapled on top of them. Yeah. I just don't think they've ever managed to get as get to get them to a place like the first one, like Until Dawn. Was that the name of the original one? Yeah, yeah Until Dawn's the original, which yeah. was a PS3 game and yeah. then got ported to ps4 and got a brand new coat Mm -hmm. of paint and yeah that really set off a whole trend didn't it yeah for better or worse but it seems like it's on the up and up yeah yeah okay brian it's me it's not you it's me okay but i need to talk to you yeah neve would you mind leaving the room for a second no i don't i didn't mean that (laughs) i guess brian i want to take your temperature on haiku the robot as well as fire emblem you take my temperature on Shinchan if you want. Okay, let's throw that in there. How are you feeling about all three of those games? Just a quick... Okay. If I had to pick one, I would probably pick Shinchan, but just know I'm going to ask you a question in return very soon. But I'm fine to put Shinchan at number 24. I could say the full name. Shinchan, me and the professor on summer vacation, the endless seven-day journey. At number 24. Mm-hmm. It might not be our number one game. But it is the longest title we've ever... And that's got to count for something, right? Yeah, that's... It's fucking ridiculous. Like, what the... the and that's the name of it. And I'm sure it's shorter in uh, Katakana or Hiragana, whatever um, text it's in, because I know they can mash syllables together. But, like, when they localize this game, they localize this game. Uh, I, I, I love the charm of this game. It's from the uh, My Summer Vacation series, which sort of died on the PS... Uh, PlayStation and PlayStation 2. Uh, it got revived, but only as a licensed game because it's the only way they could make an argument to develop this game, which is good and bad. I, at, at least it's Shin-chan. Like, I, I was kind of going... I was thinking in my head, like, it could have been a, a more annoying anime, but, like, like Shin-chan, like, like that kid's weird, but, like, I, I he's all right. I like Shin-chan. He's a good kid. I have played some of these games. Have you guys played any of them? But I'm sure you're familiar with them. No, I actually don't know much about this as a as a genre even. Yeah, because I think there's one on the PlayStation and maybe two on the PlayStation mm. 2. Yeah. Then there's Attack of the Friday Monsters, which is more or less gone now. Did you watch the action button video on it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then Shin Chan's the most recent one of these. And the art direction is fantastic. The background paintings are really good. It's all fixed camera. I, uh, I find it hard to chill with this game because Shin-chan stresses me out. 
Oh, he's a very bold boy. And so, like, I want to chill. Yeah, it's definitely not as chill as it could be. But I guess when the time loop really sinks in, you kind of kind of like. To me, I felt like, oh, there's no rush. Okay. And I played it more than I thought I would, and I got more invested than I thought I would, and I ended up like catching nearly all the butterflies. Like I didn't want to like hundred percent complete the game or collect everything, but considering how much I put in, I got a lot, lot back out of it, and I do really like this game. I do really appreciate this game. And I'd be happy to recommend it to someone who's looking for, you know, an unusual game on the Switch that maybe they need a frame of reference for. Because I think everybody knows who Shin Chan is. Like, he's he's a funny little guy. I'm glad this game exists. But okay. I think number 24 is where it stands. Brian, the 23rd option. <gasps> Food's here. Hell Food's yeah. Here. No time has passed whatsoever. No time has passed. No. There, there's no food in our tummy. No, we don't have a, a change in our rhythm and tempo. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. Um, I have uh, some amendments to make to my uh, top top five matches. Oh, of... fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I have not done my yearly roundup of Stardom or New Japan. Okay. Um, so those additions will be forthcoming in the new year. Okay. It gets okay, its yeah. own interlude then. Okay, mm-hmm, that's fine. Mm-hmm, yep. Niamh, it's your pick at number 23, I believe. Okay. Um, tunic. <laughs> Good one, Niamh. <sighs> King of Fighters. King of Fighters. That's it's already oh, gone. That's gone. Oh no, my thing's gone back to Darklist. Okay, there we go. Yeah. It's, it's just fucking Splatoon. Yeah, it is. Okay. Sifu. Get rid of Sifu. No. Okay. King of Fighters. Yeah, John, come come on. On. Yeah. King of Fighters. Yeah, John, come on. No, fuck you, Brian. You always do this. John, come on, as if I'm being unreasonable. Uh, Splatoon John. 3, Brian. Splatoon 3. It's the same fucking game again. Spatoon Tree is going to be cut very soon. Yeah, now! No, I just cut Shin Chan. It doesn't matter. Tough piss. Go. I love Shin Chan. I was devastated to see it go. No, you aren't. King of Fighters 15. Um, you never talk about that game. Y- okay, you never talk about. Shit. <laughs> Fire Emblem? <laughs> okay, Fire Emblem Warriors. Not just yet. No. Okay, not just yet to King of Fighters. Let's find another game. Uh, Grapple Dog. I love Grapple Dog. I'll cut Grapple Dog. No fucking way. Okay, I just I just put forward one of my games. So Brian, why don't you put forward one of your games? Uh, I am going to put forward Haiku the Robot. Yeah, fuck that. No, milk outside a bag. Uh... Nope. How about? Okay, I'll put forward one of my pentiments. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I I feel like I'm putting out game oh. after game here. Okay, okay, okay. Splatoon tree. No. Yep. Not just yet. Yeah. How about 20 minutes till dawn? Nope. How about vampire survivors? Yeah. <laughs> no. How about a Plague Tale Requiem? No. How about Citizen Sleeper? No. How about DNF Duel? Yeah, fuck it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. How about Neon White? No, I'm okay with getting rid of DNF <laughs> yeah. Duel. DNF Duel. But that was cool looking. No, DNF Duel is cool, but like... Cooler than King of Fighters 15? Uh, uh, Brian, King of Fighters 15 is fucking awesome. Really? It's so cool. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Because And was. I think that's why it's special, you know? Okay. But um, DNF Duel is, is really, really good. Like, I liked it. Um, I really... I felt a connection with the Crusader because we're both all about... Just setting people on fire, you know, and I really, really loved that character and I really did enjoy like my time with it and learning how she worked and how to get the most out of her. But guys, like I was waiting 15 minutes to get stomped by the same ranger character Mm. the entire and like it was there was just no one online and I don't know how to quantify like is that you know, that the game's fault or whatever. But, like, I mean, if you're trying to get into a fighting game, like, I wanted to learn that game. Yeah. Just couldn't. There's not enough else in that game. Like, there's a story mode, but it's a fucking... You know, it's an Arxist visual novel story. No, I don't... I don't yeah, care. Yeah. 
I think this game rules. I think it's it's really really cool. And like I had a really fun week with it. But like, I I, I really felt like me by myself. I really hit a wall in what I could do with it. There's an alternate universe where maybe I play this game on launch and I'm fighting for it to be in our top 10. We do not live in that universe. Um, so I'm happy enough to get rid of DNF Duel. John, your pick? Splatoon 3. Same fucking bullshit every time. New uh, new Squid Sisters are shit. Um, get, get it out of here. They do have Big Man, who's the big manta ray. Uh huh. Get it right over here. Spatoon tree at number twenty-two. Okay, I'll give you an alternative. Fire emblem three hopes. Fuck. I like fire emblem three hopes. Is it not true in fire emblem three hopes that base most of the characters just copy and paste? <laughs> uh, no. The, oh, the you mean the like the, the fighting the, 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 Yeah. Okay. That sucks. Okay. That kind of does suck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At number twenty-two, Fire Emblem Warriors: Tree Hopes. It's nice to have those guys back again. Yes, it is. Okay, I have some thoughts and feelings on Fire Emblem, and I'm going to talk about it when I'm ready, which will be in two seconds. <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors: Tree Hopes. I'm going to put that at number twenty-two. I can see. I agree with you both. It's true. I love Fire Emblem. Been a big fan of that series since I was like, what the fuck is a Marth in Smash Brothers Melee? So that's 20 years, okay? Two decades. That's a chunk of time. In the past 10 years, we've had three 3DS games, spin-off Muso games, a mainline Switch game with considerable DLC, and a new one on the horizon in January called Fire Emblem Engage. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm saying this. There's an oversaturation of Fire Emblem. And if you told me this 10 years ago, I'd have gone, cool. But now that I'm here, I'm like, Rrr. that is the noise he makes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get Fire Emblem Engage. I'm not happy about it. I used to laugh at people that <laughs> that had a problem with the Final Fantasy series. Yeah. I see what you are now. Mm-hmm. And I'm a piece of shit too. Fire Emblem Warriors Tree Hopes is an alternate timeline spin-off of Fire Emblem Tree Houses, which is a very fun SR S J R P G. S R J R P G it was our number one game in 2018. Mm -hmm. That was the worst game of the year we've ever done. I'm it still was fucking appalled by absolutely it. Absolutely not. The no, worst was one was the 2017. Right one. Yeah. When we were hungry and tired. That was the worst. But yeah. this was like, results wise, the worst. It was not. That's a great game. I really like this game. Great to see the characters once again. Outside of a few select characters, the majority of them do not have any personality. They are just a wireframe skeleton attached to a weapon set. <laughs> It's not the A team making this game. It's mm -hmm. the B team or the C team. And like, I get that the developer who does these Musou games, I think they're just called Musou. I can't, w Force, I think that yeah. is who they are. Like, they have to make money. They have to keep staff on the roll. And uh, they have to do a lot of licensed games. And there's been some real gems among them, but there's been some really bad ones too i don't think fire emblem warriors three hopes is a bad game i just think it's an okay game how it, did it make it this far then because it's great it's just not great enough to get into our top 20 yeah. john it's solid it's a fucking muso yeah yeah but did they bring the what's good about fire emblem which is all these character conversations and relationships back into it They're it's fantastic. nice okay fair enough yeah, no, it, and it's got, like... So, not a great game, but, like, the story and the characters is what brings it here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was down for what that game was giving me. It's just, I'm just fucking bloated. Mm. There's too much of it. Too much, Mars. I think it's Mars. really weird with Fire Emblem as well, how, like, obsessed it is with their legacy characters. Like, oh, yeah. engage and having the summons and stuff. It's yeah, like... Yeah. It's like, just make new characters, it's please. It's probably because the mobile game does so yeah. well. Like... 
That game was really addictive and I got some sick pulls on my first like couple of days and I had to be like, uh oh, and I deleted it. And that was five years ago. Yeah. And uh, I need to curb my Fire Emblem addiction, but it's already getting worse. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of this process, part of the healing process is respectfully putting this game at number 22. It's a great game. I think if you have a problem, um, check it out. I think uh, if you're not doing so well, this game's here for you. Uh, I know it was for me. And <laughs> there is something so comforting about a Muso. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a get out of my way simulator yeah. to the best of its ability. And it is satisfying when you have like 300 little shits and you fucking slam them. Oh my God. I love Muso games. I play a Muso game every year by accident somehow. <laughs> It wasn't part of my life decisions, but it's just sort of fallen into place. So I'm like, oh, there's another one. And it's from an IP I like. I don't know how to argue a video game anymore. And we still have 21 of these fucking don't things. Don't worry, okay. I'm really sharp. And this is going to be really awful for both of you. John is incredibly articulate right yeah. now. Uh, I am having a retroactive quarter life crisis. Neve has got the shivers. And John... Quarter uh, life crisis, Brian. How old are you going to live to don't know numbers anymore and i love counting. sorry and john is he's like tapped into reserve energy mm -hmm. and he's mm -hmm. gone into berserker mode yep. i can see him dripping with anticipation i am every orifice he has fire <laughs> in his eyes mm -hmm. the flame she burns can i cut something now mm -hmm. yes <laughs> i don't think it's your turn yeah maybe it's my turn okay you know what it's actually let's, it's let's... my turn okay okay, okay. <sighs> How about... <laughs> Neve, roller drum's great, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh... <laughs> Sometimes this podcast makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> okay, how good is Neon White? Uh, I would be okay cutting Neon White here. I like I like what Neon White was bringing, um, but it was much more of a puzzler. So my thing with Neon White... Had a great time with it yeah. when I was playing it. Yeah. Never felt too drawn to go back. Yeah. Like, once I dropped off, I stayed off kind yeah. of thing. The more... I nearly got more out of Demon Turf. It, like, that, mm. that adrenaline speed rush thing than I out of that than I did Neon White. But Neon White's cool. And, like, you know, people make fun of its story and stuff. I'm not going to say it's good. I appreciate they fucking went for something. Yeah. And if just, like, it was a pastiche of, like... 90s anime shit but fuck it they went for it and like they went all in on it mm. and I thought that was cool are you guys okay with Neon White at number 21? yeah yeah yeah. is the writing good? um it's not bad like I some think... people found a grading I didn't find a grading I just like it did get to a point where I was skipping dialogue because I was mm. like just let me play the game you know I really like and you had to kind of engage with the kind of dating sim mechanics part of it to unlock people's special levels. And like some of them are brilliant. Like I think some of them are the best levels in the game. Purple's levels. Yeah, purples are so awesome. good. Yeah. yeah. I think what like why I didn't really connect with it is like there's really only one way to skin a cat in that game. Like you, you <laughs> <laughs> there's just like you do you go through the level uh, one way and you skin you skim seconds off it by doing it faster you know yeah there, you you get five cards and those five cards all have like their use case you use this one now you could use this one this or so it didn't kind of really lend to i guess your own personal i have heard of people yeah. having that experience but my experience was more in line with yours yeah neon white neon white looks cool okay that was me, so it's Niamh, and if you're having a bit of trouble, I could be uh, quite kind, and I can offer a game at number 20. Which of your games would you like to offer, Brian? Splatoon 3. Oh, wow. Is that fairsy Square Z Lemon and Pearsy? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, yeah. I am happy enough with Splatoon 3 making it into our top 20. It's a, it's a great game. There's nothing wrong. It's never done anything bad to anyone in its life. It's just, it's the third Splatoon. And I know we were talking earlier on about, like, is there a, a good, you know, game in a trilogy that's the third game? And we were like, you know, Dead Space 3 isn't good. Kingdom Hearts mm. 3 isn't good. We were like, GTA 3 is good, but that GTA 3 is, may as well be its own game. Yeah. Splatoon 3 is the best version of Splatoon 1, which was the best version of Splatoon 2. The single player is fantastic. The online matchmaking... Uh, 
is solid. Um, the community around it is fucking hilarious. You just, you sign in and the first thing you see is someone has written, I kiss men. And Deadly. You, you know exactly what you're into. People just drawing really, really shitty Among Us, uh, which I was down for because I'm like 15. I don't care. Minor spoilers. It's fine. I think anyone who's worried about it would, would have played the the two um, idols in this and their manta ray. Um, they're the villains, but then it becomes a misunderstanding and it gets very anime. But for a while, you think the story is a bit more complicated than it is. But then you realize it's Splatoon and it's a Nintendo game and... They like to keep things very, you know, direct. I've heard it gets kind of like a little dark. It does, and it doesn't. Okay. They've made, they've, they, they've improved every aspect of the game. I've played it quite a bunch over the last four months, and I am pretty confident I will continue to play it next year, but I don't really think about it anymore. It's just, it's Splatoon, Tree, and... I love Splatoon as a series, and I play video games. I don't know. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Halo 3 is the good trilogy. Halo 3 is fucking brilliant. Yeah. And I guess people would say The Witcher 3. I prefer The Witcher 2, personally. <gasps> yeah. You, 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 yep. There you go. You get the fucking hear the real shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't think you'd hear that, but there you are. Okay. So we're going to go from 54 to number 20. All right, I'll start first, okay? Yep. At number 54, we have High on Life. At number 53, we have Pig Ship and the Giant Wolf. At number 52, we have Gungrave. At number 51, we have Ocean's Heart. I'm going to keep going a little bit longer. Number 50, Cult of the Lamb. Number 49. 50, oh Jesus. Number 49, Valkyrie Elysium. Number 48, Outriders, World Slayer. Which is, I'm still fucking mad about that. <laughs> Would you want to be number 48 then yeah. or 49? Can we just, just, just keep going? Just I don't want to. At number 47, Astronite. Any of you want to pop over there? 46 is Paparazzi. 45 is Scorn. Oof. Uh, 44 is Callisto Protocol. 43 is Weird West. 42 is The Closing Shift. 41 is Demon Turf, Neon Splash. 40 is Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga. 39 is WWE 2K22. Uh, number 38 is Frog Gun. And uh, number 37 is Voice of Cards, The Forsaken Maiden. 36 is Kojin, Sword of Rewind. Uh, 35 is Dying Light 2. 34 is Stray. 33 is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. 32 is Signalis. And 31 is Ghostwire Tokyo. John? 30 is Goodbye World. 29 is Beacon Pines. 28 is Pokemon's Legends Arceus. 27 is Super Kiwi 64, 26 is Sonic Frontiers, 25 is The Quarry, 24 is Shinchan, Me and the Professor on Summer Vacation, The, en- the Endless Seven Day Journey, 23 is DNF Duel, 22 is Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, 21 is Neon White, 20 is Splatoon. And our remaining games are... In alphabetical order. In alphabetical order. 20 minutes till dawn, A Plague Tale Requiem, Bayonetta 3... Blossom Tales 2, The Minotaur Prince, Citizen Sleeper, Elden Ring, Grapple Dog, Haikyuu the Robot, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, Outside a Bag of Milk, Outside a Bag of Milk, Ollie Ollie World, Pentiment, Roller Drome, Sifu, The Complex Found Footage, The King of Fighters 15, Tunic, Vampire Survivors, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. There are some games. Those are some games. And I believe it is my cup, mm-hmm. King of Fighters 15. It's not that good. <laughs> do you want to sing some praises at uh, least? i love king of fighters 15 and it is it is one of those games that really just feels like a love letter to every other part of that series and um, there's so many like little secret cutscenes between characters of them referencing shit that happened like like literally 10 games ago you know and it, it's so fun to see that and these are fully like these fully voiced cutscenes and just there's so much warmth and love and like the gameplay is king of fighters there's it's different, but it's King of Fighters, but it's just, a lot of it is just well, how well I felt like these ca- they captured these characters. And sometimes when you beat people as Leona, she's like, you want me to step on you? Why? And that was just, it's, it's a good game. Go on. 
No, no, it's, uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, you're, 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 you're uh, done talking? Yep. Yeah? Yep. What do you want to cut, Brian? Uh, number 18? Number 18, let's go with Blossom Tales 2, The Minotaur Prince. This is a fantastic game. Every time I play it, I have a big smile on my face. I also feel bad because every time I play it, I get closer to the ending. And I don't want this game to end because it's just doing exactly what I want it to do. John or Neve, I can't remember who said this game earlier was a hug. This game is actually a hug. Just saying. I'll fight I think, you. I think you said it was a, some game was a hug, Brian. But didn't one of you guys say it earlier on? Mm-mm, I don't know. Shit. That was I'll, so long ago, Brian. I'll fight myself. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care. I'm angry and I'm a gamer. And, uh, you know, us real motherfuckers <laughs> like Blossom Tales. Um, look... This is a fantastic Zelda-like. There's an even more fantastic Zelda-like that we'll be talking about later. And uh, this would probably be up higher on my list, even maybe in my top five or six. I don't know how I do numbers. But this is a great game, and I'm fine putting it at where it is at number 18. Is that cool with you guys? Yeah. That's cool. Niamh? Um, Roller drum. Okay. Okay. Cool. I really like Roller Drum. It kind of gave me that speed I want, like from Neon White, but kind of gave me all the options to kind of deal with everything in the way I wanted to. Um, it has. It's just like it just wants to keep your flow going at all times. So like even if you bail, like she'll do a small little roll to kind of keep momentum up. So it's just like a really fast game. It kind of. You know, when I think of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and stuff like that, like this has this feeling of it more so than the remakes for me. Yeah, like I I remember playing the remakes and there was a lot of like hitches to your momentum. Yeah. Any footage I've seen of Roller Drum, I've not played it, but anything I've seen, it just, it is just motion to motion. Yeah. It never breaks its flow. And it's cool. Like you're doing sweet flips on your like rollerblades um, and you're slowing down time. You're shooting people. You're swapping your guns out. It has like a little like narrative built into it about like everyone having to play in the roller drone to kind of survive this horrible world we're in because this is kind of... This is how you make money as yeah. you go on the deck games. Um, it has a really cool look to it, a really cool style, really good like graphic design. Yeah, because it's inspired by Mobius as well. Yeah. Was it the, the previous uh, game from last year? That mm, like Sable. This? Sable, yeah. yeah. That very, very thin, yeah, cel-shaded line, line art. Yeah. But it's just all the color palettes are very muted, but it's all mm-hmm. very well considered. Oh, yeah. It's like every like new level has its kind of own kind of thing going on with its palette and its like look and what it's doing. It's just like it's a fun game. It's like it's really it's a really veg out and yeah, beat those high scores kind of game. Cool. Roller drum. That brings us to number 16, which is my cut, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. What is this, John? Yeah, John, you're going to need to explain this from the very beginning. Okay, so this is a sequel to the game Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. Okay, cool explanation. Um, what would you like to cut, Brian? <laughs> um, okay, so this is a infinitely strange visual novel where you essentially play as the voice in the head of a girl who's suffering, like, a complete break from reality. Mm-hmm. So the whole the, the game's called the game the two titles are focused on like milk because it kind of starts off with her going to the store and trying to buy some milk. Mm. And it's like just this complete constant nightmare and she's kind of aware that it's a nightmare but she's kind of not. It is very this is a vibe game it and it just nails it so so well like the art the writing the 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 soundscape it plays like it's it's the kind of game where like you you sit down at night you put on headphones and you just fucking absorb into this Mm -hmm. thing you know that's the kind of game this is and it's such a powerful version of that and like even the dialogue like you're talking to the girl and she just she'll be trying to tell you a story, but she just gets distracted and never goes back to the story. And like, it really, I'm not sure, I wouldn't be confident saying like, this is a really good depiction of this kind of mental illness just because I don't fucking know. Mm. You know, I've seen people say that online, but like, I don't, I don't know. But like, it certainly does just feel like 
viewing life through this very, very fractured person and the way it kind of brings the obstacles they face to life is, I feel like, really, really well done. Very strange game. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people would, would just not get anything out of it. I, I love it. I think it's awesome. And like I'm looking forward to playing through it more over, over the holidays. Sounds cool. Brian. It's me. Okay. We are at number 15. Oof. Yeah, this this is this is the blood point. Everything hurts from here. Okay, the next five games Ooh. do not get into our top ten. No, so this is mm. this is cruel, and this one's conflicting me. But I gotta talk about it, and I'm gonna be a bit more open about. It. Does Bayonetta three oh. get into our top ten, John? <sighs> okay, here's the thing. And it's tough because I know you haven't beat Bayonetta 3, Brian. And I don't want to now. The last third of Bayonetta 3 is some of the coolest shit that's ever been in Bayonetta. Oh, man. There's a musical number. <sighs> that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay, like... Shit. Uh... I give you Haiku the Robot. Okay. Is that me? That's you. Okay. Haiku the Robot at number 15. This is a brilliant explore action game. Don't laugh, Niamh. He, so. mean, he, needs, he means corner scratcher. Okay. Uh, Metroidvania? No, wait, I'm not saying that word anymore. I. That's for chumps. Do I look like a chump to you? No, no I'm a no, champ. Absolutely not, Brian. No, I'm a cool guy. Uh, I, I can count. Uh, number 15, Haiku the Robot. This was a fun couple of days playing this game. I didn't feel like this wasted any of my time. This was engaging. This was satisfying. The only kind of gripe I had with it was that the boss battles weren't particularly memorable, except for the final boss, which all of a sudden caught my attention and became a big fucking problem for a whole day of my life, as, you know, a big boss battle is. But who boy, that feeling when you fuck that boss up. Hell yeah. In terms of the exploring uh, aspect, it was just a 10 out of 10 for me. This isn't in my top five um, because there's better games out, out there this year. I think if this game excelled in all departments, I'd be pushing, uh, pushing for a higher number, pushing for a higher spot. But I think number 15 for Haiku the Robot is where it belongs it's a great game i think if anyone's interested in that genre check this game out it's on pretty much every platform it's a lot of fun okay let's take you with the robot is that back to me neve neve yeah okay um a plague tale requiem at number 14 yeah um i really liked the original plague tale and this is more plague tale but bigger so when you kind of did your stealth uh, sections in the original game, it kind of had the the route laid out for you pretty much. There was one way to do it and they they were fun. Like, But with this, it's more of an open world that they've developed. So That's there's cool. so many more ways to approach stealth and approach uh, problem solving in it. And that really, that feels like really cool and really like... I don't know, like, like there's so many different ways to kind of solve every problem. I think what I really liked about the original P- Plague Tale is you're, you're playing as Amicia and her younger brother Hugo, and there was uh, a great vulnerability to them as children. Oh, absolutely. Um, like, like for once, the stealth made sense. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, yeah, like, they're they're clearly going to be in trouble if they're caught. Mm-hmm. And, like, the brutality in which they're kind of dealt with in the world is so cruel and harsh to them. Yeah. Um, there's a whole new system where you can kind of build your character in a more, like... You can make her a, like a Tomb Raider. You yeah, can I, make I've, her super I've seen, violent. I've seen screenshots and she had a bow and arrow on her yeah, back, yeah. which is such an upgrade from the slingshot mm-hmm. that she had in the previous game. Like it seemed like she was way more of a hunter. Yeah. If, 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 if that's the route you go with her. Yeah. And you can do that or you can just do it kind of as non-lethal as you kind of, you can make it. There's some characters that you will have to kill. But uh, yeah, it looks great. Rats, rat technology is still brilliant. It's better than ever. Better than ever. Love, love a sea of rats. <laughs> I used to, yeah, like, uh, I, I wasn't too hot on the original game, but 
the rat stuff um was genuinely impressive mm-hmm. so i'd say anything in that department has to have only improved yeah and like i'm just really happy for this team as well like like a plague tale became as popular as it did and they've got to make a second one and this is yeah it's fucking awesome yeah mm. like i hope this is like an ip or something that can kind of keep on growing because it it's kind of it's doing its own thing and it's it's really successful in it and uh yeah i i really would like more of these games or more from okay. that studio yeah hmm. john it's your pick it's my pick at number 13? 13. 13. 13. That's how we say it in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's tough. This is tough. Ollie Ollie World. I'll give you Grapple Dog. I prefer- no, Grapple Dog rules. Okay, Ollie Ollie World. Okay. But Grapple Dog is going to our top 10. Awesome. You. Now, now that I know you're ready to cook Grapple Dog. You bollocks. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. I'll fucking make you. Agree. I'll make you eat those words. Okay. Uh, You're the faker, faker. Okay, fine. At number thirteen, it is Oli Oli World. This is the third game in the Oli Oli franchise. They made Oli Oli and Oli Oli Two. Welcome to Hollywood. Back to back in the mid 2010s, they took a, a long, hard look at themselves and developed two games back to back called Roller Drome and Oli Oli World. And they're both very good games in their own regards. I enjoy the light story line to this game about achieving Narvana and uh, being the best skater uh, around. Character doesn't talk, but everyone talks for you. The dialogue spends its time, is welcome, and then leaves. It is just the right amount of context without it being like condescending or bloated or whatever you want to call it gameplay is super improved i found in the previous games when you were landing tricks you'd need to like hold depth because because it is not played like a tony hawks pro skater no, game all. it is a 2d game where the character is on their own momentum and you can like press a button to kind of get them to push along on the board but they go and and it teaches you kind of different tricks per environment and it does a decent enough job at kind of explaining everything but when that game gets hard it gets fucking hard but if you can kind of get into that flow state while you're playing with the music and everything that entire combination is just it it, it is nirvana I, I i get what they were going for character customization is great it's purely just a skeleton with cosmetics on top doesn't make a difference how the characters look but there's just such a huge range of how you can make your human shape appear which i appreciate and i love the art direction love the simplicity of it it just it presents itself super well cool and the dlc was very good okay so we are now up to number 12. Number 12. Arguably the two most tragic positions in the whole thing. I think number 11 is the saddest one. Yeah, it is. Okay. Brian, I believe it's yours. Yeah. John, is Sifu good? Sifu's awesome. John, is uh, Citizen Sleeper good? Citizen Sleeper is awesome. Yeah? Yeah. John is Pentiment good. <laughs> see, what I, <laughs> you, see what they did there, Neil? It's pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I haven't played enough of Pentiment to have a proper opinion on it, but I know Neve feels quite strongly about it. I mean, if you want to cut it, I wouldn't mind. Um, I mean, we can like. There's other games you see. Yeah. Like, I really like, like to be honest, I, I could let go of Sifu around, around now. Okay. You don't want Sifu in the top 10? Okay, look, Sifu is great. Sifu is fucking brilliant. But, like, I think it was such a great combat system. But, like, it puts a lot into its story. Like, like there's not, like, huge cutscenes. But, like, it, it's, a, it's a big game about revenge and all this kind of stuff. And then there's all this like mechanic of aging and like you you know your offense gets stronger as you get older and then you're trying to get your years back by doing better runs of the levels and it all connects really well 
But by the end of it, like, I really felt like I was left with a kind of nothing burger of, uh, like, not even a story, like an experience. Like, nothing about it thematically connects. And I found that kind of a bummer because I really love the gameplay so much. And, like, it's it's when it all flows and it all clicks, like... You feel like Neo out of the Matrix. You know, you feel like John Wick. You you feel like the hallway scene from Old Boy. And it works and it absolutely achieves in that. But like, it never hit me on any kind of emotional level. It more felt I was performing correctly. But it is such a good game for that. And like the improv is it. Like, it's such a big game about improv. You know, it's like, like you are looking at your environment and thinking like, what are my resources here? How do I use these two items to beat these eight guys? Which one of the eight guys do I really need to watch out for? Once, once this item runs out in this area, where do I go to like bottleneck them or all, like all these just incredibly innovative solutions you have to find. And like when you do, it feels so good. It also has like every boss battle in it is great. It doesn't have a bad boss battle, and it's such, such a good game. I think it's as good as a game could be without tipping over into something that I love, but I don't love it the same way I think I love nearly every other game left on this list. Okay. That is Sifu at number 12. And then this is... Who's, who, who's, whose pick is it now? John? I think it's me. This is the coveted... Number 11, which is, you nearly made it into the top 10, buddy, but here you are. And this one, this one's always going to be like a bit sour. (sighs) This is really going to hurt. Xenoblade Chronicles 3. No way! Just like an no, absolute I'm no. I'm, I'm goofing. I'm Neve, goofing. Neve, come I'm on, Neve. Neve, Neve, no. come on. Neve, Neve. Neve. Brian, just keep Neve. 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 Put Neve. the gun Neve. down. Neve. <laughs> okay, no, no. Okay, my actual, actual pick. Tunic. Bane out of three. Really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's fair. I, Jesus. Look, I look, I look. I, I was like, joking earlier on, but there's also a bit of weight to that. No, like there's, there, like I love Bane out of three, but like. It is a great game and also somehow the dramatically worse entry in the Bayonetta series. It's it's the weakest of the Bayonettas. Yeah, um, like, I really did not like the new enemies. I thought they they suck. Like, they're just so personality They have no pride or honor, so, like, you can't humiliate them because they're just blob men. I thought the gameplay was good, but, like, at times it's such a mashy mess. And they have like, such an over-reliance on the kaiju stuff, which I love, but it, like, there's too much of it. And this kaiju stuff is weird, because some of it is just the shittest, like, oh, they did not have time to flesh out like this Like, rock'em, sock'em, yeah. four-second delay wind-up attacks. But then some turn into a giant light gun game where you play as a gigantic gigantic woman in the sky taking a bath blowing bubbles at weird like man-made goo creatures and like shit like that that they're, they're, they're like brian like you should play through this game like the, there is great shit in it yeah but like it's hard when like it's coming from just one of the most pristine pair of sequels of all time of all time like i don't know that there's a more consistent two games than bayonetta one and two they're yeah. so fucking good, and this isn't that. And then, like, like you it, take the story stuff at the end of it. By the, the way, story we're, gonna, is, we're about to spoil everything. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah no, there, there, there will be an episode description major spoilers yeah. for all the games we played. Yes. Yeah. Part um, of it. Like, this game ends with Bayonetta not just figuring out that she's in love with Luca, but that they're destined lovers and always have been forever and ever and ever. And it's just nope like Jean and Bayonetta is this relationship they've been building for like three fucking games yeah it's in the art yeah and like even if you gotta put Bayonetta with a dude what what about Rodan like there's better like options any than fucking other, Luca just you know anyone but Luca yeah, he yeah like Luca's like the comic relief character and it's so fucking weird do you know how this game ends no please tell me the new girl 
Viola. Viola. Someone tosses her a pair of glasses and she puts them on and the person goes, now get out there. Bayonetta. Is what a Bayonetta title now? I, uh, I guess Bayonetta's dead. A Bayonetta. <laughs> yeah, she's the new Bayonetta. So the series... It's like Batman, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, on top of that as well, like, Viola's sections... She's just not that fun to play as. Mm. Like, she, her whole thing is a parry, and it's a bad feeling parry. Like, it, it... Okay, Sonic Frontiers has a better parry than Bayonetta 3. And how fucked up is that? And one's a character action game. Yeah. Despite everything I'm saying, like, this game was a bummer for me in a lot of ways. I still had a great time with it. And it's still, like, after all, like, I was, like, a weird thing about these lists is it really shows you what you give a fuck about, you mm-hmm. know? And, like, because remember earlier, Brian, I was like, I don't know where Bayonetta is going to be. And, like, now it, it nearly made our top ten. But like, it makes sense. Yeah. But, like, earlier, I we were thinking that it would be gone around, like, 25 or something, weren't we? Oh, yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah we, we, we were but, like, but yeah, But that's what no, these no. lists make you do. You have to actually compare it to everything else. What is a video game? It's still... <laughs> what is mid? What What is mid? Not Bayonetta 3, but it's also not top 10. No. It's number 11. Breaks my heart to put it here. It really fucking does. But, like... It, it just... It can't go any further. No. You know? We wish it could. Yep. Yeah. I, I I wish that the I I wish that this list ended with Elden Ring versus Bayonetta. That would have been hype. You know that would have been so cool. But, but that's I, not. I, I I think anyone who's played enough of Bayonetta gets it. Yeah. Like it just seems like the general consensus. It's not just us being like we are contrarians. It just seems like this game is fantastic. It's just it's not up to the spec of the overall series. Yeah. <sighs> Top ten. To recap briefly, 20 Minutes Till Dawn, Citizen Sleeper, Elden Ring, Grapple Dog, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Pentiments, The Complex Found Footage, Tunic, Vampire Survivors, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Is that 10? That sounds like more than 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, okay. it's 10 games. Okay. okay. Oh, fuck. This is hard. Who picking? I believe it's your turn, Brian. Okay. Grapple dog. Is that fair? Do you want to go? Do you want? I mean, I I I could see it going a spot or two higher, but yeah, like this is where it ends. Like it's it's uh, like I'm looking at games like Citizen Sleeper, Grapple Dog, Pentiment, and they're kind of in the the lower half rather than the upper half. I'm I'm like I I don't know where they are number wise, but. Logistically, yeah. that's where they would be. Like, I'm... Mm, vampire Survivors could go now. <gasps> I really like Vampire Survivors. I think there's a hump with it. I think once you have to start, like, grinding um, money to buy all the level ups outside the game, um, to... Once you get all of those, there's, like, the next part of it opens up and it gets big and fun again and just going through like playing a level for 40 minutes and having like waves and waves and waves of enemies come after you and your character's just standing there and it's clearing the whole thing it's like it's really cool getting to that place okay i do agree with john like when you were saying that there's kind of like like at some point you can do any build when you get to that 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 level um, you level up your lightning, you level up, level up your garlic, you level up any kind of thing, and you can just stand there. Yeah, there's kind of like, I feel like I've hit a wall, but I maybe there's another point where, there, where I get over that again, because uh, it does, like, at some stage, you just, you get so leveled up that it's just playing itself. But, like, my problem with this game is I felt like I was never even having to work to get to that point. Like, yeah. it was like, okay, the magic wand is really good, and the garlic are really good, if I go in all in on them, I'll be fine. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I had, like, engineered anything interesting. I felt like I had just, yep, that's what you do. Yeah. And that was every build I ever did. Mm-hmm. But, like, the game is satisfying to see it yeah, in action. Yeah, that's it. It's like, and you've made these decisions and yeah. it's effective. So the, the first time you make an invincible character yeah. and you just watch enemies just crash against your wall, 
it is inc- such an incredible feeling. Mm-hmm. The only promise, the, the only problem I have is like, I think the first time I did that, I was like, oh my God, I have gotten so lucky and I have broken this game. And it was such an exciting feeling. And then I did it again yeah. and again and again. And by the end of it, I, I just felt like, what am, what am I doing? Yeah. You know? I think earlier on when you have to get the gyms to get your level uh, to get your levels up is when it's its most tense because you can get like a you can get a lot of duds to start with or a lot of things that uh like the axes for example that like you need to position yourself in such a way mm-hmm. to get the gyms and uh, level up some more or like the lightning or anything like that um and having to kind of rely on movement to collect those that that's kind of where the game is but then yeah once you kind of get to a point uh i've it happens to me every run now where i've just like i love lev- i've leveled up everything everything's maxed out so then they start giving you food or coins when you like and i level up as that's well just because because items. Yeah. But at some point they just stop giving you different upgrades yeah, like they yeah stop floating new ones and it just it makes the end of those maps so boring yeah and then like sometimes i just like, leave the character stand there you know until like whatever end of level boss kind of comes after you like whether it's the reaper or the giant crab or whatever yeah it kind of it does hit a wall but like it's so satisfying at the start I paid like I think seven hours of it in a row nearly one day. Oh yeah, like the, the, <laughs> the first time you play this game, fucking just right off the next couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, it's just like it's so addictive, it's so fun. But yeah, now I'm kind of at the stage where I'm like just standing there. That's our number ten game. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it's in our top ten. Me too. I love the game. I I loved it. I I played. I didn't play this. Yeah, game. You yeah, would. you didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not. I'm scared of vampires. Um, was that you, Neve? Yes. How are you feeling about Pentiment, Neve? I'll let Pentiment go. This is such a beautifully crafted game. Like the amount of research and work that went into making this look like a manuscript uh, is just kind of staggering. Like it is just a gorgeous ode to craftsmanship like to art you know and there's a lot of fun in the writing there's like the mystery is good i i enjoy the character and like kind of going through his life there's kind of like a there's like a sadness to it as well because uh given the time period you're in everyone's kind of trapped in these in their station you know and they can't move beyond it and you definitely want to let pentiment go yeah yeah Okay. Like I'm, I'm okay with seeing it go here because, like, like as well, like of all this, like it has gorgeous animation and it's all of these like things. It is like it is like a character conversation based game, you know. Mm. And even though I'm like you're moving a lot, tr- like you're, there's a lot of back and forth. There's like I'm enjoying it a lot, but I'm not like I don't love it. I guess. Okay. Like, okay. I love everything, like, I love all the work put into it, I think. I would have loved to have worked on this. Okay. Yeah, it seems me. like everyone, I, then, yeah, no, like, it's a cool game. Yeah, like, it I looks love little cool. medieval weirdos. Yeah. Have, have you played much of it, Brian? Uh, I've only just seen footage of it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but just... <laughs> it's It's got a charm to it. <laughs> it's really funny looking. Yeah. And it, and it does, like, it, it kind of hits you, like, with its humor and it's kind of, like... I don't know, these real problems of these real people in the town and, like, you get to really like those characters. I really like there's an old woman who's just, like, a widower and she's just, like, she has no one around her. So, like, you end up doing chores for her and, like, they make a mini game out of, like, snapping sticks and she's, like, berating you for not snapping them the right size. But you just kind of have these, like, little connections with people and because there's a time skip in it as well, you come back and she's dead, you know? She's she's gone. Mm. Um, a guy who was, like, Martin, who's this, like, little dickhead, uh, is is a better person now, you know? He, he ran away and he tried to live his life and he got in trouble with the law. And, like, it's just, like, you're seeing them change over time. And I think there's a lot of care given into how these characters work as a community and you feel it in it the writing's brilliant um and it's aesthetically brilliant as well pentiment pentiment's number nine nine okay respectfully i think it's got to be grapple dog at number eight are you okay with that this is a game i recommended john you played it 
So Brian recommends me games sometimes, and sometimes I'll download them and be like, what is this fucking shit? What is this Brian-ass piece of shit? And then sometimes it's Grapple Dog, and I immediately fall in love with that game. I talked earlier about, like, the best feeling games. This game feels fucking awesome. It's tight. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's like this little dog, and he has his grappling hook, and then he... His he projectile like, hook, because it's based on the Bionic Commando games, but it's just the most refined version yeah, of that. Yeah, and it's it's like... He comes out of the, the out of his grapple into like a little sonic roll, and yeah. there's a little bounce on it, and oh, it just yeah. feels so like good. like they know how to do the nostalgia and the throwback without it like overpowering. Yeah, it because it still feels like its own thing. It has its own identity, but it wears its like references with like a sense of confidence. Where it's not like annoying or it's not in your face. It's yeah. not cringe. It's just, it's a cool game made by a very small team. Previously, Ollie Ollie Rose, my number five game of the year. This is my number four. Like, this is easily in my top foot personal five. I love Grapple Dog. It's great. And it, it's just like, even just stuff like the sound design. Oh, the like, the sound great. design in a 2D, in a 2D platformer. It's not the thing that you think needs to be great, but just like that when you like grapple onto a surface and yeah. the sound of like you jumping on a robot, it all just comes together to create such such a lovely experience, such a lovely like kinesthetic experience, you know? Yeah, um, there's only a couple of tracks. Uh, the tracks only change every couple of levels, but they don't sound repetitive. It's like you you like like as soon as you hear it again, you're like, no, I, I like this song. I, I'm, I'm fine listening to it. Because it's not like degrading. It's not. It's not bothering me. It, it it it's just adding to the appeal of it. Um, one thing in particular I love about this game is the tutorial section at the very beginning, where you're with the dog and it's when you get the grapple hook, but you're introduced to this kind of like floating head character, and he's you kind of and he's trapped down in the kind of temple as well underneath the temple. And he's kind of teaching you the basics of the game and the swing and teaching you how to get a good jump with the arc. And as you go through the tutorial, uh, you kind of get a bond with this guy, this floating head. As soon as you get the treasure, he fucking double crosses you and he gets his body back. Turns out this is the villain of the game. And it's such a great way of like getting you to like one character, dislike another character, and also teach you the mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. And that's over and done with in the first five minutes and you're you're like the game hasn't stopped to baby you it's just it's not wasting your time yeah it's so effective and i just think like other games could look at this and go oh it's so optimized great game it's such a great game i cannot recommend it enough to anyone who's the slightest bit curious it's brilliant and holy shit the pixel art Neve. Mm -hmm. Number seven. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about 20 minutes till dawn? I'm ready to lose that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, vampires. Well, it's more like eldritch, eldritch abominations in okay. this game. So, Ghouls. Okay, look, I think what I love about 20 minutes till dawn is like, I feel like all the high points we said about Vampire Survivors are there. You can turn your character into a just machine that wipes the screen. But you have to be so clear and so precise about what that build is. And there's a really simple reason for that. I feel like in Vampire Survivors, like not, not I'm not trying to just shit talk Vampire Survivors, but I think it's like it is an interesting difference. In Vampire Survivors, all your upgrades add a percentage. They you fire twenty percent more magic. Your garlic is twenty percent wider area, does twenty percent more damage. That's every upgrade. In twenty minutes till dawn, every single upgrade, or at least like I would say seventy five percent of them, are an actual mechanical change to your character. So now, inst not instead of just firing like one bullet, you fire two bullets. So now every time you reload, you shoot uh you shoot a tornado out. So it's like, okay, well, what can you actually do with that? Well, 
what if you actually try and find the upgrades now that lower the amount of bullets you have so you have to reload every second and then you also spec out into the into the like reloads that like lower your reload time so now you're making your gun fire so frequently and reload so fast that this ultra powerful reload or tornado buff that's only meant to happen like once a second all of a sudden you're firing that like eight times a second very lateral upgrades very lateral upgrades but it's up to you to creatively combine them in meaningful ways like another really another this this was the build i figured out that just set this whole game off for me it's like um okay i'm gonna use this girl and her whole thing is every time she fires a bullet there's a 50 percent chance that she's gonna have like she's gonna shoot lightning so i pick, pick the submachine gun which is firing like you know 12 bullets a second 50 percent chance each time but then I've got another upgrade that is a 20% chance to reload a bullet whenever I do fire lightning. And then combine that with another one about how if I stand still, there's a 33% chance I won't actually like use ammo when firing. And all that means like I can just destroy the entire fucking field with just this like giant tidal wave of lightning. And that's something I had to really consciously engineer it's the kind of game where like you come away from it still thinking about it and then like something clicks and you're like i should try this then you go back into the game and it works you know like it is this game is just mechanical ecstasy like i adore this game and like I, it's it's still an early access but like i can't wait to see what they add to it because every time they add new stuff like i just I get right back in there and I love it. It's, it's a fantastic game. It's really, really great. Me next? Yeah. yeah, for number six. Number six. Citizen Sleeper. This is also a very tragic position. Citizen Sleeper, Elden Ring, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands, The Complex Found Footage, Tunic, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say Citizen Sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Citizen Sleeper is awesome. It is so close to being magnificent, but I don't think it's quite there. And I think, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of the, uh, some of the problems we talked about. Like, um, just the writing is very good, but the characters aren't especially memorable. And few of them speak with their own voice. Like, you have the bounty hunter, you have the vending machine. This was a game that drew me in so much when I first played it, but I don't find that that just love lasted all the way through. What about you guys? It's definitely one where I don't think it's particularly special, but then when I'm playing it, an hour goes by. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like these kind of games. What's happening? Because mm -hmm. I don't. Like, I'm not I'm not the target audience for this game. Um, and so I guess if you're someone who's into these system-built dialogue tree games, it must be fucking crack. It's very addictive. Oh, and like mechanically, it's an amazing game. Yeah, like there's so much stuff going on under the hood, going on under the hood. Like, it's just, it's a really cool, like, setup. And expands out from mm. that. I'm curious, because I'm only a couple hours in, I'm curious to see where it goes and what the scope of it is, mm. I guess. Because, like, I don't know how like how overwhelming it, it, it becomes or... See, it doesn't really... That's, yeah, what, like, what I really liked about it was, like, managing your resources. But by the end, you become extremely just... You finish them all, yeah. you know? Yeah. Things get finished, and then there's no more to do. Like, so, there, yeah, so, there were yeah. several days in that game at the start where I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through tomorrow. Yeah. And that was awesome, you know? Yeah, because you're trying to get the, the, the kind of stuff that keeps your Android character alive yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. So and like, the fact that you have, like, like, two meters, mm. like, you've got the top one, you got the bottom one, and you kind of need both of them to get, like, yeah. some good results. Yeah. But it's really hard to juggle both. And, like, I think if you fix this problem or the issue with the dialogue mm -hmm. that's a top five game yeah oh for sure yeah because like i also found a little like narratively i kept being given choices and i didn't think 
my character would pick any of them. So I kept being middle of the roaded a lot of the time, which wasn't particularly satisfying. No, because then you're not having like a dramatic situation. Yeah. It's just kind of neutral. Yeah, because like there's like one thing where it's just like you can get off like at the space station and you feel like you're working t for, towards that for a while. But then by the end of it, you have your own apartment. You have like all these people in your character's life and all of this and it's kind of like i was like i don't know why she would leave yeah currently like i i didn't understand why i would make her pick that yeah because it because so, it's, it's strange how it's this weird environment where people aren't happy to be there but it's the life that they've been dealt with again. yeah and like there's hardships but they're gonna make the best of it but it seems like you can make even the better of it and yeah yeah you're taking advantage of things and then all of a sudden you're kind of like role playing someone who's not necessarily a bully but you are kind of like on the feeding and receiving end of things yeah. so like you're grand like you're fine yeah i was just like i just don't understand why no you struggle. would leave anymore and mm -hmm. yes and without that struggle there was no way and then they kind of offered me that in another way as well where there was another way to leave and not like just like and I, again, I was like, I don't know why she would do this. Like, I never got to a point where any of those narrative situations felt like she would do in any way. And then it felt very kind of like, oh, is that it? And like, I don't like having to pick things that I feel is in incongruous to my character just to get the gameplay outcome, you know? Yeah. It's just like, oh, maybe I should just get on it to do it because the game kind of wants me to pick something either way. And I, ne I, fe I felt there wasn't enough narrative or something that was pushing me in one direction. And thus, when it ended, it just kind of fizzled. Yeah. Do you know, like, I feel like a lot of these are kind of issues that I really wouldn't be surprised if you said these to the people who made this game. They'd be like, oh, yeah, we know, mm. <laughs> you know, and like, fucking hell, I think they're in an incredible position to do something like even better from here. Yeah. But like, it, look, it's one of those situations where I feel like we've just gone through everything we don't like about the game. It's still number six. Oh, I... I I played yeah. this game in one sitting. Yeah. I was like completely addicted to it's, it. Yeah, it's fucking... And like, it's, just yeah, to reiterate right. as well... The artwork of Blackie Junk Gallery or Blackie Sun is Blackie Sun, now, like mm -hmm. fucking just gorgeous. I'm gonna get them. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the it, the fucking appeal out the wazoo. Yeah. Everyone looks so slick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it's so much like personality in every single design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cyberpunk designs without the annoying crutches. Mm -hmm. And like, like the writing is really before. good. Oh, I the just, writing is, yeah. It's just, I felt like the, the character writing, specifically the dialogue, falls behind like the quality of the art. Yeah. You know? And it has a great soundtrack as well. Yeah. Like there's like a real like melancholy to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And which I felt like personally, I liked coming out of like, I guess, lockdown situation. It was yeah, felt like a game yeah, that was yeah. really trying to speak to the, the harshness of shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find some sort of connection and you bond over that. Yeah. Because it's hard to find anything. Because mm -hmm. everyone feels so disconnected if you can just get. Like yeah, something, realness. <laughs> some realness that's relatable, and you get yeah, like and, and there is yeah. From from what I got with the dialogue so far, there was moments where it was kind of like, well, no, I'm gonna make that decision because that's the more humane thing, and mm. the response from the NPC would always be kind of like appreciative. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I like that about it. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet game. Yeah, it's a very sweet game, and a worthy number six. Top five. Okay, the games left are Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Tunic, The Complex, Found Footage, Kirby and Forgotten Lands, and Elden Ring. Little indie outsider Elden Ring. Brian. I know you've been pushing it, John, but I think we got to take a hard look at Xenoblade 3. Uh, Brian, I'm willing to cut Xenoblade 3. <laughs> it's yeah, cool. I think I, yeah. okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The Complex Found Footage. Yeah. Complex Found Footage. Okay. Why does the complex found footage lose to a fucking shitty Kirby game? Because it's the best damn Kirby game in town. <laughs> um, Neve, Neve, why are you picking Kirby over complex? She likes me. That's so true. And I have no objection, but it just hurts. Brian, mm. It just hurts. I know. Yeah. It's my I and Kirby can go as well. Like fuck no. both of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about Xenoblade 3 then? No! See? I can hurt you. 
Okay, can I can I ask you guys a question? Okay. How the fuck did the complex found footage make it this far? Because we knew you'd we, yeah, cause, you, cause, would fa- you would fight it to the nail. And we been, knew you'd yeah. be kicking up a fanny fuss. Yeah. And I think it goes in at number five and you can have your big fucking pork pie of a tribute to it. Here you go. Yeah. Go on. Go on, John. Well, no, we haven't decided it's gone yet. It's gone. No, it's gone. It's, <laughs> it's number gone. five. Let's talk about Kirby. Um, no. I think Kirby perpetuates some really harmful stereotypes that, like, I think it would send a bad message to that if, if we let it go any further than this. To who? Uh, yeah. To who? It's a furry game. It's a furry game. There's a cheetah in this game who has titties. It's disgusting, and I don't think it should be allowed. John, Tunic is also a furry game, so I don't... There's no titties in Tunic. <laughs> you checked, did you? You go uh, doing a titty scan at the moment, John. Why are you Why are you going red? Um, we can cut complex footage. We can cut um, complex. Okay, yeah, I, I completely do not understand how this game made it this far. It in my heart, absolutely. This is the fucking yeah. Deus Ex of this year. This is yeah, absolute yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. I don't know how the f- because like, we knew you were gonna be like this. Yeah, I'd be like, what? I'm, you, you guys have said cut it, and I'm like, okay, I, I, there's a chance I might have cut it five fucking games ago. Okay. What? <laughs> Um, no, I, I love this game. I love this game so much. It's uh, just... Look, may, and maybe part of it is like I played it when I was fucking like in, in like the liminal space, headspace and all that kind of mm. stuff. But like it was just one of the most powerful experiences I had this year with games. It was just the most atmosphere... That, like this, this game wins my award for the most atmosphere. Like just complete fucking transport me to another world my life doesn't exist i'm not even a fucking person i'm just in this weird place where it is nothing but it's so beautiful because of that and it's so freeing and it's so gorgeous and like it looks incredible like it looks so so good and like it's haunting and it's eerie and but it never gives in to like becoming a full-on horror game it just lets you stay in that perfect like liminal experience and fucking it's so good it's so so good it's not the kind of game I'm recommending to everyone i just know that i loved it so much and i still don't know how the fuck you two let it get this far well let's just say we're sweetening sweetening you up okay i can play the meta game <laughs> i've made agreements in my imagination with both he <laughs> you don't know this but i know this I don't know why you're shaking your head. We're Nave. all just gamers. Yeah. Um, like Enjoy. gamers don't talk. Yeah. <laughs> and we can barely fucking talk. Uh, can we get rid of Tunic now? No. 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 Fucking Christ. <laughs> I think we should get rid of um, Elden Ring. Fucking no. <laughs> second half of Elden Ring is garbage. <laughs> it's, it's not the second half game. of Elden Ring. It's the like last area. The last Neve thing. likes Elden Ring because there's a lady in it who takes off her clothes and tries to fight you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Though. It so, is great. Yes. I, th- I think I think number four is a good spot for Elden Ring. No. <laughs> Just get rid Brian, of Tunic. Oh, okay, hang on. Neve, once, give me one sec. Brian, what do you think? Okay, we got Elden Ring, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Yeah. <laughs> Tunic and Xenoblade Tree. Well, like, <laughs> Elden Ring is... Yeah, let's even... cut, like, come on, let's cut Elden Like, imagine how mad people would be for, for a me. laugh. Come on, Neve, do you want to... Come on, get in on this. <laughs> we, 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 we push... Fine, okay, Elden no! Ring. No! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? We did shy the no! hedgehog. We did shy the hedgehog is best old game. Like, yeah. <laughs> talk at the two kids with matches, John. I don't know what the... <laughs> You insane? How about like, Number four? Do you guys care about this process? John, how about like Tunic? Yeah, let's get rid of fucking Tunic. <laughs> no, no, no fucking way. Bro, you <sighs> love Tunic. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tunic's combat is bad. So is Hollow Knights and people love that shit. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. No, Tunic is great. It's the greatest game yeah, ever made. It's, best it's game better time. than um, Xenoblade 3, Josan. Oh, definitely. Mm. Yeah, like... But... I think a number four is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Absolutely not. Yeah. You can go fucking... There is no... No, Brian. Brian, buddy, son. My little love. It's gone. Make it worth my while, John. I have, I have nothing left to give. I do. I don't. What do you want me to give? Tunic. Yeah, <laughs> give me tunic. You would... Okay. Brian. <laughs> John. You would actually prefer tunic... You think Tunic is a worse game than Kirby and the Forgotten Land? 
I think Kirby in the Forgotten Land is my favorite game of the year. That's fine. No fucking way. Wait. No fucking way. John, No More Heroes 3 was our game of the year last year. Yeah, so yeah. Smash Brothers was the year before that. Yeah, and I still play that shit. Do you play No More Heroes 3 recently? I do actually, yeah, I, I beat it today. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. The thing is, he's lying, but it's true. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's just that kind of guy. I, okay. I just want to give you... Okay, how long do you think we've been recording for? I don't know, but let's get rid of Tunic. <laughs> how long? Uh, two hours. Two and a half. Three. Two hours, 55 minutes. Jesus okay. Christ, what is wrong with us? <laughs> and that's uh, this is just the main show, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, we, before that we did uh, an hour and 50. <laughs> okay, Neve, I'm going to tell you this right now. There's no way fucking Tunic is the next thing being caught. How about Xenoblade 3? Oh, no. Cineblade is so fucking good. They met a good JRPG, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Tokyo Mirage S Sessions Sharp F. I think you'd really like Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp F. <laughs> <laughs> Should check out Kirby. They haven't Pretty made good. a good JRPG in so long, and here it is. It's fucking brilliant. It's an epic. It has so much going on in it. Its world is beautiful and interesting, and every like it has an Elden Ring vibe. Like every new area I, I can think go of to. One game on this list that has a better Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah Tunic. It's, it's, it's Elden Ring. It's tunic. <laughs> no, get rid of fucking Tunic. I'm tunic, not getting rid of Xenoblade. Tunic fucking rules. Tunic is incredible. <sighs> Tunic, do, like, okay, Neve, I know you look at Tunic and you're like, but I hate Zelda. <laughs> Tunic is genuinely, like, the most interesting game that came out this year. The no way that fucking way. game slots together is incredible. It the way you unravel what that entire fucking world is blew my mind in a way that just, like, a game has not in years. Like, Tunic makes me feel like pl I'm playing a video game for the first time. Xenoblade's a pretty okay JRPG. <laughs> Stop, it is... <laughs> I agree with John. That's the worst part. Ugh. I hate how this part always makes you talk about shit about games you love because I love Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. Too. Neve, look, can can me and you just be real? Just be okay. us for here a sec. Kirby's like all right. Yeah, Kirby should go. It's like, like fine. Yeah, that sexy cat looks so fucked up. Yeah, stupid sexy cat. No. Brian, your favorite part of Kirby isn't like a mainline boss. Listen, Brian, we all want to fuck the cat, but you can't just. Yeah. I want to fuck the lion. What are you talking about? Oh, he's a sexy lion. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe, maybe I'm changing. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the lion in Kirby is sexier than the lion in Elden Ring. Lion in Elden Ring is just a shit stand. Yeah. That thing sucks. I really disagree with everything being said right now. Yeah, then, just counter. The, the lion. Okay, in Elden let's Ring. cut Elden Ring. Yeah, fuck it. It's not in our top three. Yeah. Fuck the fans. It won a prize at something. Over my it? fucking dead body. I don't give a shit what other awards Elden Ring won. <laughs> no, we're not. We are not being that podcast. We're not fucking like... Okay, I don't know that anyone has done this. I haven't listened to Giant Bomb's Game of the Year, but I. Mm. we are We are not we're not being putting cool. fucking vampire survivors yeah. at number one over Elden Ring. We're not being quirky. Stray is not beating fucking Elden Ring. Okay. We can have a conversation about what 1 and 2 are when we get to 1 and 2. The idea that we cut Elden Ring at number 4. Look. Well, then just get rid of fucking Tunic. Neve. <laughs> that Tunic's pretty good. Let me finish get up. Get rid of Kirby. Let, let me finish no, up with Elden amazing. Ring, okay? Okay. We can cut Elden Ring at number 4, but I am going to set myself on fire and burn your fucking house down with it, Brian. Okay? It's fine. I'll die. I, look. I don't want to cut Elden Ring, but like. Well, then stop saying crazy shit, Neve. Well, like I'm, 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 I'm telling you what we're gonna do if you're not gonna give up Tunic. I guess you could, you could give up uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Or Brian. Mm -hmm. Okay, look. Here, here, here's my honest feelings on this. I have already cut my darling. The complex fan footage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your number one video game this year? Go on, show your hand. I am Brian, my favorite video game. My number one this year is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. But Brian, your taste is shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still 33% and it doesn't matter if my taste is okay, shit. Okay, you say, you say you're good with the year. <laughs> it's fucking Elden Ring. 
Elden Ring's your number one. Yeah, Elden Ring's my number one. Elden Ring's my, like, number two. Okay. John, what's your number one? My number one game of the year is Tuning, motherfuckers. Is it? Fucking fuck off. <laughs> what's your number two? Elden Ring. Shit. See? It's two for us, one for you. Shit. Okay. Look, here's... I just think we get rid of uh, Tunic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Compelling argument. Get rid of Kirby. No, it's my hurricane. Oh, fuck's sake. Um, okay, wait, hang on. There's three of us. <laughs> wait, and none of us have said Xenoblade. None of us have said Xenoblade. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It's not, in our, it's not our number one. Okay, what's your number two game, Dave? Xenoblade. Shit. That doesn't fucking matter. Fine, my number one game is Xenoblade, and my number Maybe two you can't game do is that. No, Elden you're bullshitting. This, you're bullshitting. <laughs> no, you showed your hand. Yeah, already. you yeah. showed your hand. Okay. Xenoblade okay. three, number four. My number three game is Tunic. Xenoblade is just so fucking balls to the wall. Everything happening at all moments. It just like it's insane. <laughs> you know, Neve, it's very heteronormative. <laughs> You gotta read that subtext. What are you gonna do? Oh, uh, yeah. Look. Slim pickings for the yeah. gays. I'm just saying. Neve. All the villains Neve. are gay. <laughs> They're so gay. They're so gay. They're Neve. fabulous. Neve. Yeah. Neve. Join me. Let's get Kirby out of here. It's yeah. not even that good. Yeah, let's get rid of Kirby, Brian. It's fucking brilliant. What are you talking about? I have a knife. <laughs> I'll piss myself and I'll hug you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my special attack. I don't care. I, I'm already at home. You're the one. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, we're doing no. this in my living room. You, you're the ones who have to fucking walk home in the cold. Mm. It's been real icy the last couple of days. You want to slip and fall and hurt your bottom? No. Huh? You want to bruise on that tush? No. John? Neve? No? Huh? Look, fuck it. Fine. Get rid of Tudor. <laughs> <laughs> no. John's favorite game, you. Why would you be so uh, mean? Neve, Tunic is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it more than Undertale. Uh, it's look. game of generation. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do? Okay. Okay, Brian. Tunic I think, or Kirby? Brian, I think you have to make a legitimate argument for Forgotten. Because, like, legitimately, that is the one that I look at and go, this does not hold up with the other games. The best Kirby game in a long, long time went into my top three overall Kirby games in the series. This if, if, is, you're, if you're saying it's your favorite, then I give a shit, but that this does not move me otherwise. It's my second favorite Kirby game. Superstar, Forgotten Land, Planet Robobot. They are the best aspects of Kirby. The switch to 3D works so well because the scale and presentation is so well considered. I'm talking about a pop-up storybook to the nth degree. Has the right amount of levels. It's not lacking, but it's not bloated either. <laughs> the boss battles, they're all fun designs. Perhaps even a bit sensual i'm not saying sexual i'm saying sensual everyone i've never said sexual. we've covered in a previous episode the difference between the two yes yeah each one of them stands out i think about them sometimes <laughs> i think about that armadillo with the road sign stuck to his back it means a lot to me the upgrade options to all these abilities stops the game from being repetitive that's one of the few problems i have with kirby is that you get your different hats you got your abilities you end up kind of falling into a loop all of a sudden, that's thrown out the window with the upgrade system. The fire ability becomes the dragon ability. That's fucking insane. Like, there's weapons I've hated since the beginning of Kirby, like the cutter. That eventually becomes the buzzsaw, which is now all of a sudden one of my favorite fucking weapons. I don't know how you got me to change my mind on that. Kirby did. Because he, he reached into my heart and said, Look, buddy. Fuck him. Fuck John. Fuck me. Fuck <laughs> I can't believe Kirby said that. <laughs> and you know what? The post-game content is harder than almost all of Elden Ring. Brian just threw his phone down. Like, okay, it's all cool. It's a great Kirby game. But Xenoblade Chronicle 3 is really fucking good. It's like an incredible JRPG. I don't even like Xenoblade. This game rules. 
and like the writing is really good. P the voice acting is actually pretty good. Yeah. People are just not used to hearing un-American anime. <laughs> But like it, it's fucking and like you know in a game in, in the this year of all fucking years, it was cool to just hear a game about how war is bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like I need people needed that. Mm -hmm. They do, to be fair. And the fact that you would say we should cut Forgotten Kingdom, Forgotten before, Land, Forgotten Land, before Xenoblade. Okay, one's a four, one's a three, and neither the Perfect. two or one and two. Okay, is that fair? Is square Yeah, yeah, that's. So, Zen yeah. so number four, Kirby. Number three, Xenoblade. Yeah. Xenoblade three at number three. Kirby at number four. At number one in my heart. My heart is dead to you both. <laughs> Look, I'll swap Tunic with Kirby. Get Tunic. Uh, get, get, make Kirby Brian, number two you, you and get like, uh, yeah, and get like. You know what she's trying to do. And get right. fucking uh, Tunic's four. There we go. Tunic's four. <laughs> nope. Tunic is my Zinoblade number three. Is three. Nope. 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 Yeah, nope. and then Kirby's number two, John. where he belongs. No, no, no. Next to the big John. boy. She's Elden dangling Ryan. like Harry yeah. on the No, stick. no, 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 no. Okay, hang on. Let's, I, let's, I, just, I, let's just back up. I, I've not typed long. anything into this Word document. No. Okay, Brian, out of the. Four games that are left, which is the one you absolutely don't give a shit about. <laughs> Santa Blade 3. Yeah, and that's why it goes out at number three. And this is why we like give Kirby. We give I mean, him... Xenoblade isn't even your John, number one. It's his second favorite Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! Yeah, let's get No, to we're like not doing out. this. We're we not doing like, this. Look, like... look, I okay. As far as I'm aware. I am the person who has to get up tomorrow morning and work a 16 hour day, right? Mm -hmm. I will fucking destroy myself <laughs> tonight. I don't give a shit if I get three hours sleep. It's my it's my subscribers who will pay. I don't care. I will fucking fight for <laughs> Tunic all goddamn day. I, I will filibuster this fucking <sighs> podcast. Well, like... Four is very respectable. <laughs> it is. Neve, <laughs> shut your dirty fucking mouth, okay? <laughs> Uh, it would okay. Wouldn't it be cool if it was like number four, tunic? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. No. Just hear. Hear. Hear me out. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, the, maybe the remaining order can really <laughs> sway me on this. Number three, Xenoblade Three. Number two, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. And at number one, Tunic again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think. Oh. Uh, I. There was probably another game in there. I couldn't oh. tell you. Tunic is the only game on this list that does something different. That <laughs> That's like bullshit. It, it's like a Zelda like. It's not though. Like you think it is? You're wrong. Like not in a like, oh, okay. my opinion on art is different. <laughs> like in a you look at a house and be like, look at that turtle. You're just <laughs> wrong, Neve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, cool. Secret passages. The game has never done that before. Wow. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, just different ways to like navigate around the map. It so doesn't... this this ladies and gentlemen is a textbook bad faith argument. Play this clip whenever you need to explain anyone to this in the comments section <laughs> the combat's crappy yep so, that's half of it that's half the fucking game no it's not you're yeah. playing it like an idiot neve how far did you get neve oh i don't even know anymore so not even the first boss no i did beat the first boss i don't think so i don't think she's lying Brian, i just I, don't what's the first boss Brian? what's the first boss he's like a fucking guy with a spear no, that's not a boss. That's a mini That's just a boss. regular foot soldier. Okay, that's just a regular dude. I killed a regular dude. Because the combat sucks so much, and then I turned off the combat, and I was like, what's the point of the game then? Oh my god, Neve, you understand so little about this game. I, I want to fucking scream. Yeah, because you... Because uh, this, this, this is Neve doing, like... This this is Neve doing like Heath Ledger's The Joker. This is Neve, this this is Neve like just wanting to watch shit burn. That's all this is. The trick is to don't play Xenoblade Three and then you're fine. Oh. You're off the hook then. Like John, I'm just gonna have a look at our uh, previous games that we just cut there, and like I'm seeing complex found footage got the number five, and so yeah. I think out of respect. So I had to I had to cut. I'm the most recent one who had to cut. Yeah. And we should just cut Elden Ring. 
Fine. Okay, we're putting Elden Ring. Yeah, Elden Ring at number four. Yeah, Elden, Elden Ring at number four. Okay, Elden Ring is none of our number one <laughs> game. It's all our number two, is yeah. it? No, it's my fucking number one game. Then why are you letting this happen? <laughs> Neat, you have to get out of Joker mode and you have to start getting back into person mode, okay? Like, look at what you're doing to yourself, Neve. This is insane. Look, Neve, I know how much you love Kirby's upsetting number you. one. <laughs> Kirby's number one, Elden Ring number four, fucking uh, Tunic number three, and, two. <laughs> and two in this fake list that we're not doing. Is two. No, no, I refuse. I refuse. Look, how are you guys feeling about Outriders World Slayer? <laughs> John's got up and left. <laughs> It was the price of a full game. <laughs> it truly was a delicious last course, yeah. though. <laughs> doing okay, John? No, he's I'm getting not doing okay. he's getting redder and redder. He's like Vince McMahon in like peak attitude Guys, era. This is so simple. Number four for Ger to Kirby and the Forgotten whatever. For, to Kirby. <laughs> Number four Kirby and the Forget. Number three Xenoblade. Number two Tunic. Number one Elden Ring. Why are we pretending that's not what this list is going to be? Because it's funny to yeah. drag it out and piss people yeah. off, especially us. I know. I'll I just think Tunic is shit. So yes, <laughs> I think it was shit too, Neve. If I played eight fucking minutes, I spent so much longer on it. And like, I don't add. Ugh. It's just you can't even argue against it because you don't know what the game is. I... But me and Brian, your best friends in the world, <laughs> Neve, who you love so much, are telling you it's a fucking awesome game. I know. I'm just doing it because I want to, John. <laughs> That shit's a fair point. Yeah. If she 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 does what she does, she does what she do. Yeah, she's a joker. She, <laughs> she's having a joker moment. Okay, look, it's very clear that what needs to happen here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got Elden Ring. Elden Ring is number four. No, but it's your favorite game, Neo. What are you yeah. doing? As, as, as my second favorite game. Xenoblade is not. number one. Uh, Tunic's number two, and Kirby's number three. Okay, okay look, there let's get go. real about Xenoblade. It's like a pretty okay JRPG. No, it's, it's fine, a it's fucking, all right. It is, it just goes so fucking hard. It's such a good JRPG. It is, yeah, it's, it's actually- kind of, It's kind of sexist. It's kind of ballsy to do an anti-war game. People don't do that anymore. All like fucking Final Fantasy 16, it's just like, oh, the monarchy. Like, it's like, who gives a shit? It's like, it's it's actually kind of a ballsy narrative that they're doing. Fuck the police. Yeah. I don't think war is bad is a ballsy narrative. <laughs> <laughs> it is ballsy for a JRPG in 2022. I don't even think that's true. Well, the way they're reason, dealing with reason, war, we, uh, I'm not just saying war bad and that makes it ballsy. I'm saying like people questioning why they're doing stuff, why they're in the system. Okay, they no, the, you, you, in, you have a legitimate point. You there. know, and like it is a game about systems. Yeah, systems think... of oppression and like people being hurt and ground down by them. And I don't, I like there's like there's something so powerful about this found family who's rejected and pushed out of it, and like they want to save people. It's a really good point. Man, wouldn't want to be Kirby in the Forgotten Kingdom <laughs> right now. Forgotten Land. He inhales a car. Yeah, okay. But he does. Oh, shit. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. Yeah. He you you forgot about mouthful mode, Brian. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I haven't been factoring in mouthful mode. Mouthful mode fucking blows everything wide open. Mm -hmm. You can inhale a vending machine. Oh, it's so good. You can shoot out soda cans and you can replenish your health. Tunic, Xenoblade, Kirby, Elden Ring. Tunic is the only game that does something new. No. Mouthful mojo. Okay, good point. <laughs> <sighs> we're gonna have to hurt each other. We're not even, like, dear listener, we're not even, like, at the bad phase of this. This is only the warm up. Kirby, okay, like, let's, we're, we have to kill Kirby, Brian. We have to kill him. Are we Are we gonna have to get paper and pens and we're gonna have to write down stuff and we're gonna have to burn the paper afterwards yeah. because there's sins on it? This is the worst one of these we've ever done. I am having the time of my life. Good. Here, here's what I'd say about Kirby. Brian never argues in these things. Mm. We do, Neve. 
And the fact that he is arguing is swaying me a little bit because he obviously feels very strong. Honestly, I don't really get it. I think Kirby and the Forgotten Kingdom is the weakest land. of lands. Is the we okay? Fuck it, never mind. <laughs> I think Kirby and the Forgotten Land is the weakest of these games, but I know Brian. I'm not going to concede. It. Usually, I'd be pretty chill, and I'd be like, "Look, Tweedledum and Tweedledoo, they like okay. to fucking Look, opinionate okay. each other, and I, I usually peace out around this Neve, point." Your number one game is probably going to be number one. Yeah. That has to count for something. But it's fucking Elden Ring. It should be number one. It's the naughty dog of this year. <laughs> it's like the fucking best game that came out this year. It's pretty good. Well, like, we can get to that, but we have to get these other three in order, and at some point you have to take into account that your number one game of the year is going to be number one, unlike me and Brian. Kirby's my favorite game of the year. Thanks, Neve. And the Joker reemerges. <laughs> <laughs> Neve, come on, you know I got a point. Okay, okay, so, like, what's happening here? What's being cut? Tell, tell me what's being, what's happening. I, I, think, think, I think, I think, I think, it, I think at this point to me, it's Xenoblade, Kirby, Tunic, Elden Ring. I'd almost agree with you, John. Almost. How would you feel about Xenoblade, Elden Ring, Kirby? And number one tunic. Fucking no way. <laughs> Never. Neve, how would you feel about tunic? Neve, like, love it. Shut up. <laughs> tunic. Xenoblade tree. Kirby. Elden Ring. Yeah, perfect. Sounds great. Go on, pitch me something. The thing I pitched you before. Go on, do this. Pitch me again. Xenoblade right? tree. Kirby. Tunic. Elden Ring. No. Oh, fuck you both. Come on, pitch me something better. That's all I got. Yeah, like, okay, four Kirby, three Kirby, uh, two Kirby, and one, it's fucking Kirby. Kirby yeah. wins Game of the Year. Yeah, but you put but, Kirby but, at four in the year. That's what, not fair. But, but not, Kirby, <laughs> not, not Kirby in the Forgotten King, yeah. Forgotten Lands, but like the other game, Kirby game Brian really yeah. likes. What? Superstar? Yeah, yeah Kirby that's, Superstar that's, is Kirby our game Superstar, of the year. Kirby Superstar, the Super Nintendo game. The, from from the game, the game, game from the 1996? Yeah. It's a pretty good game. Okay. I think we know what this has to be. Neve, you're getting your number one game at number one. It's your number one game it's as well. It's not, Tunic is my number one game. You think Tunic is better than Elden Neve, Ring? you can call me fucking stupid. You might <laughs> even, even be right. That. It doesn't change anything. <laughs> he stands by it. Jesus. I know, he's a fucking freak. At least, you know, at least I like Kirby. I'm a cool guy. This is as close as we're going to get to a consensus. Brian, you get Kirby at number three. Neem, you get number one at number one. And for at least Xenoblade's here. You yeah, know. okay. 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 I want to go home. <laughs> at some are, stage. Are we locking in? Yeah, we're locking in. We're locked, Brian, we're locking in? I agree. The last space for any objections. We're locked in. I object. Tunic should be number one. <laughs> Fucking fuck <laughs> off. No way. No way. How about Tunic number one? Kirby number two, Elden Ring number three, Xenoblade number four. Okay, final call. Number four, Xenoblade Chronicles three. Number three, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. No. Number two, Tunic. Number one, Elden Ring. Fuck. Neve, I also, I think we should be aware that your body is going to give out soon. You're yeah. growing weaker and weaker. Where's the swap Tunic with Kirby? Oh. No. Fuck that. Kirby number two. No. Yeah. Elden Ring number one, Tunic number three. No, Kirby. No. And I've beaten Kirby. I have the authority to say that. Did you fight the post game stuff? No. Did you fight that guy? It's fucked up. You know what? We settle this right now the way it needs to be settled, I will. <laughs> and maybe we come back in January and rejig some things. Oh my god. I don't want to have a shower. Yeah. I'm. I'm feeling fucking sprightly. You're in, he, Neil, he's fucking faking it. Yeah. I know how fucked up he is on the inside. This is purely an outward thing. He's dead. Mm -hmm. He's fucking a hollow husk of a man. He just put out a Chainsaw Man video. Do you think that's a healthy person we're looking at? No. He will concede. We can fucking crumble him. How about tunic number four? <laughs> Go on, show me your muscles. 
teach you. I just, I just feel like we're going to be here a while. Okay. So. No, I need to leave. <laughs> no, you don't, Neve. No, oh, my nice, brain is mush. Nice, nice and comfy. Neve, you're exactly where you want to be. <laughs> Guys, come on. We know what this is. And we all want to go to bed. Can I please call it? What? 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 The, same, the order we agreed to like three seconds ago before I was an asshole again. Yeah, yes, yeah. Go so, on. Look. Number four, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yes. Number three, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Number two, Tunic. Number mm -hmm. one, Elden Ring. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Okay. okay, it is official. It is locked in. So just to do a final rundown. Number 10, Vampire Survivors. Number nine, Pentiment. Number eight, Grapple Dog. Number seven, 20 Minutes Till Dawn. Number six, Citizen Sleeper. Number five, The Complex Found Footage. Number four, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Number three, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Number two, Tunic. And number one, and my personal favorite game of the year, it's Elden Ring. You fucking little wank. <laughs> because Elden Ring's unquestionably the best game yeah, of the year. Yeah, that's what I, yes. It's pretty good, like it's yeah. got a... Yeah. So guys, that's going to do it for Game of the Year 2022. How are you guys feeling? Like shit, because yeah. I talked about a video game, but to be fair, we did hit that sweet spot of almost three and a half hours, which yeah. is what we kind of set out to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was kind of going, wow, we're powering through this, and now all of a sudden we hit that fucking wall back there, mm -hmm. and we should all go fuck ourselves, and I don't like But them. you know, before we all go no, fuck ourselves, fuck you. we have one more decision to make. It's the Let's Fight a Boss, ultimate galactic champion of hopes and dreams, Elden Ring versus Fire Emblem Three Houses in what has to be the biggest fucking stomping we have ever had. Elden Ring beats the shit out of Three Houses. Yeah, it yeah, does. It does. Hell oh, yeah. oh, those those teenagers are fucking they're, they're like, They are mm -hmm. ash, my friends. No, that, that that They never should have held this title. That fucking castle is just crumbled. There's now some weird titty snake woman that lives in there <laughs> mm -hmm. and her her backstory uh has a 40-minute video by Vati Vidya. So yeah, um, I just want to thank Brian and Neva, two of my best friends in the whole world, and had a wonderful time hanging out with them. Uh, I feel like I've lost two people today. Uh, I knew them, but I don't know them anymore. Mm. To me, they're just pair of assholes. Guys, thank you for joining us for 2022. We're going to be back in January, and we'll uh, we'll see you all then. Um, if you're at MAGFest, Let's Fight a Boss is at MAGFest. We have a panel, Brian. What time was that panel? It is in panel room number two at 7 p.m. on Friday, the 6th of January, if I'm correct. Yeah, and I think we'll all actually be, like, looking each other in the eye yes. by that point. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'll let Xenoblade down. This is, that's my feeling on Yeah, this. I guess you just didn't feel as strongly about it as I feel about the things I love. <laughs> Guys, uh -huh. thank you so much for joining us in this very special episode of the Let's Fight a Boss Game of the Year 2022. I had a spectacular time. I had a time. I think this is the worst experience in my own home. <laughs> I, I'm supposed to feel safe here. I don't. Niamh? Uh, made me feel alive. Mm -hmm. uh, a fucking fuck tunic, that stupid, ugly little fox. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. <laughs> I don't even really give a shit about Tunic. I just wanted to safeguard Elden Ring getting here because I wanted three houses out. Anyway, goodbye everyone. Thanks for joining us for Game of the Year. Tunic's got a lot of problems. Combat's bad. Fucking fuck.